What nonsense is this? Rubbish people. How can I receive such an amount of money? How much did you get? 200 pounds. Let me see what you got. Oops. See what I got. I just received 200 pounds from my brother. Oh, you got a lot more than I do. Oh yes, with MoneyFix, you can receive money from any part of the world to Cameroon directly into your mobile money account at the cheapest rate. Wow. Are you looking for the best exchange rate for all your money transfer? Try MoneyFix. Log into moneyfix.com. MoneyFix. Fast, easy, and cheap service to Cameroon. Ah, <sighs> MoneyFix. So here guys are a few of the products that I use that make me feel very beautiful, you know, very confident. And if you have any skin issue, be it acne, hyperpigmentation, or oily skin, dry skin, whatever problem it is you're facing with your skin, trust me, Escape is here for you. Escape is actually formulated to suit all skin types, all melanated skin types. So when you use this, you see how confident I'm feeling. This is going to be you after using Escape products. Trust me. Good news for Cameroonians living abroad and taking care of their loved ones back home. You can now purchase medications from the Your Farm app and have them pick them up from a local pharmacy. Here's how it works. Payer's Journey. Number one, you search the medication by typing in the name. Number two, then you select the pharmacy in a city where your loved one lives. Number three, you make the purchase using PayPal or credit or debit card. Number four, you send the unique confirmation code to the recipient. Recipient's journey. Number one, the recipient presents a confirmation code at the pharmacy and collects the medication. Download your farm app now. Hey fam! Hello, hello, hello! How are we? Are we there? Can you guys hear me? Hi, good evening ladies and gentlemen. Can you guys hear me? Hi, hi, hi guys! Share the video, come on, come on guys, share the video. So that we have so many people um, come on board and we do this, okay? Um, it's good to have you. I know that I did not mention, but of course, you guys should be getting used to these timetables already. So you guys know already that on Wednesdays, we have um, business and entrepreneurship with um, Roland Fomundam. He has been absent for a while. Okay, so he just resumed. And hopefully when he comes on board, he's going to tell us if we're going to do this every um, um weekly or quarterly or whenever okay just so that we have a, a fixed routine guys hi 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 welcome guys share the video okay share palm hearts you know how we do it okay share and palm hearts share and share and share tag your friends to come and ask their questions regarding business and entrepreneurship so today we have a very special topic okay he's going to take your questions i know this session is not always very jump -packed like when it comes to hiding my ID sessions like that because not everybody's interested in business and entrepreneurship but hey you will be just doing yourself a very a disservice by not being part of this um wisdom that is being dispensed by our very own entrepreneur par excellence um Roland Fomunda so yeah guys so share the video share to many groups share tag your friends share to your platforms different platforms, different pages, okay? Let me see those of you who are online. I'm, I think I'm very close to the camera. I'm trying as much as possible not to, let me see if I can. Hi, hi, hi guys, hi, hi there. Okay, so let me see. I have B Gwendy. B Gwendy was first. Hey, B Gwendy, kudos to you. You were first to connect today. Um, we have Mercy Vera Imbia. Hi darling, Tino Nguana. Nguanya, hey, Kerry Annabelle, um, Irene Efande, 
um, Clarice Tomla, Folifa Nina, Daniel Du Bay. Mm, hope I got it right. Susie Love, and Zen Len uh, Angel Better, Susie Love again. They have Leah Sankara. We have um, Elumba Juliet Wendy. We have Elizabeth Ngala. We have Pretty Spears. We have Matt Gwek Lillian. Where are you guys watching from? Let me know in the comments. Share the video, guys. Just share as you join. Share, share, share. I really do apologize. I did not give um indicate, okay, that we're going to have this. So I understand, but I wasn't quite sure of today's session. So, okay, I did not want to put out something and then I start telling you stories again. But hey, it's been a long time, man. We've not seen Roland Foreman down, but he's here today to answer to your many questions. But before he comes on board, guys, please do share the video, palm hearts, okay? Tag your friends who are interested in this very important slot to come and participate and benefit, okay? Um, Amen North, I flourish joy love, Nueli Mas Bright, Bong Ben Marie Fonui, Chamen Lillian, um, Julian Pink. Um, um, yes, I've seen all of you. We have Kem Lovestar, we have Mercy Verily Imba, Imbia, so okay, I've seen you guys. Guys, palm now, palm heart, share the video. Share, share, and share. Abomo Alma, I see you, darling. I see you. Guys, where are you watching from? Inda and Daddy says he's watching from the UK. Hi. Okay. Needless to ask you how the UK is because we have a good weather today. Um, Blee Markel, somewhere new. Somewhere new is nowhere. <laughs> Kila Quinta says, I'm watching from Cameroon. Where in Cameroon, sweetheart? Um, we have Kelinda. Um, who is watching from where? Where are you watching from? Elumba Juliet Wendy says, I'm watching from Yaoundé, Cameroon. How is Yaoundé, Cameroon today, darling? So how is it? How is it? How are you guys faring today? Um, Gua Martin says, I'm watching from Kuseri. Hey, Chef, Chef, Chef Ngoa says, I'm watching from Kuseri. Kuseri, are you sure? You're just teasing me. Um, Bungong Valerie says, I'm watching from um, Abu Dhabi, UAE. Hey, yeah, you're always there. You're always there. And it's an honor to have you. Um, Epole Shinatina says, I'm watching from Boya. Hi, how is Boya today? Kelvin Damteke, Douala Cameroon. Our Amy Bride watching from Douala Cameroon. I guess we have a lot of people watching from Douala Cameroon there. Um, we have um, Floris Joy Love watching from North America. Hey, how is North America today? Um, so guys, share the video, okay? Let your friends come on board, okay? Because it's very important. And you know, I understand that we underestimate the very important things, like when it has to do with things that have to do with our future, our purpose, our destinies, we somehow tend to joke about them. But this is something that is given to us on a platter. You want to benefit from this free of charge. The only thing you're expected to do, share the video as you join. How beautiful can that get? Guys, Roland from Mundam is backstage. Yeah, like I said, we've missed him, but he's waiting for you to get to at least 100 for him to come on board. Come on. He's a big boy, man. Welcome him the right way. Um, Juliet Solomon, you're watching from S. Ben, my three in Queen, Pamenda. Okay. Hi, how is my three today? Um, Kem Lobster, he said, I'm busy admiring the beauty hall. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, focus, focus. <laughs> focus, guys. I'm in Africa too today. Okay. I have this um, Kente fabric. Okay, I, I know you would love it, but I, like I always say, because I'm always not very full on the screen, you can't see my outfits like that. But hey, you will see it on the platform when I do my photo shoot eventually. <laughs> Wally Mona, um, you're watching from, is that Ghana? Because I know black stars of Ghana, they have a black star. I don't know, you just put a flag. So if that's Ghana, then how is Ghana today, Wally? Um, Annette Berenui. Um, uh, I have Lily Jane. Oh, yeah. So a lot of you have joined again. We have Yan Yannick Yanko watching from Ekona. How is Ekona today? Kila um, Quinta Queen says, I'm watching from Douala, Cameroon. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I am really, really honored to have you. Okay. So without further ado, I'm just going to take one very short. I, I insist it's short. It's not going to be long, okay? Very short commercial break before I get to bring our very own Mr. Roland Fomundam on screen. Stay tuned. Do not go anywhere. 
There is always that moment when the world treats you like you ain't worth nothing. When hardship and difficulty makes you want to melt in the presence of your landlord. In these moments, the weak break down in despair, but the strong stand up and find solutions to their problems. They look for people who can help them build their dreams. They look for directions as they search their hearts to find their dreams. Then they finally find their dreams in places so beautiful, so magical, even their wildest dreams couldn't have led them to. In moments like this, they visit all their meeting groups. They use up all their last savings, put up every penny to the pursuit of their dreams. Then finally, they realize their dreams and find happiness with their loved ones. Because the finest things in life are so close but seem so far. Like Mary, you can only learn and build your dream. At Pedis Properties, we build your dreams with you. Oh, welcome back, guys. Can you hear me? Is the sound still very okay? Oh, it's gone. Um, Nobody should call me. I'm not sure why you call when I'm live. Because when you do that, it interrupts with the sound. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me? Let me know, guys. I see Diamond Mata Ashum Ashu Bisong says I'm watching from. Um, who's that? If not to where you're watching from? Messi Vera Imbia says I'm watching from Sweden. How is Sweden today? Oh hi, um, it's Bling watching from the UAE. Hey guys, share the video. Just about time for me to bring on our very own Roland Fomundam on screen, guys. Palm him hearts. Palm hearts, palm more hearts, okay, as he joins us on stage to take your many questions, answer to your worry, your concerns, and of course, talk about something very important um, um, on mentorship, the importance of mentorship on relationships. Are we ready, guys? Palm me more hearts. Come on, palm hearts, palm hearts for us. Palm hearts, more hearts and more hearts, okay? Roland, are you ready? Ta -da. Hi, Roland. <laughs> hey, Deli, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. It's good to see you after a long, long time, man. <laughs> that wasn't too long, was it? It was, it was. Come on, we've not had you for like a month now. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I was, I, I had I had a lot of things to handle, but I'm, I'm glad to be back. I am. I'm yeah, yeah, we're, we're really happy to have you. Can you hear me properly? Ten on ten. Oh yeah. Okay, guys, can you hear Roland as well? Can you guys hear Roland? Can you hear him speak? Just indicate in the comments, guys. And Roland, can you can you move a bit closer to your screen because you're a bit far off? Please, can you do us the honor to see your handsome face as clear as possible? Yeah, get closer to your screen, like lean forward, lean forward again until we are comfortable is that, with is your that, position. Is that good Please. enough? Is that um, good enough? Try and work more time. Let's see. Because I, I think I'm too close to my screen, but you're a bit far from it. Okay, no, guys. Okay, I'm, so you can I'm hear me. Enough. Now, so somebody called and kind of miss, messed up my sound. So I'm barely getting him. But of course, I'll manage, okay? Because I can't get off the studio right now. I see you guys. Keep pumping hearts and sharing the video, tagging your friends. There's this lady who was very active last time. And no, I don't know, Roland, do you remember her name? Uh... I think she had a very vanny kind of oh, oh no, there's right berry. There is a our Mrs. from them in the building. Guys, make some noise. <laughs> I see you, Berry. It's good to have you. Okay, I hope you have your own questions. Though you are nearness to raw material, you take advantage of that. But hey, you still come to support us. So we're happy to have you. 
Okay, um, so we have all of you watching. Um, hope you have your questions ready. I know, like I said, I did not inform you for you to have prepared yourself. But of course, before now, you should have had those questions that are burning in your heart that you would want to know. And of course, coming from, like I said, our entrepreneur by excellence who knows about just about everything regarding um, entrepreneurs, business and entrepreneurship is always very willing not selfish with this knowledge that God has blessed him with, you know, to help us, us, all, us all with. Okay, my soul inclusive. So I'm just here to benefit at least. Um, hey, Roland, so so what do you have for us today? Tell us before we get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> No, I think uh, I think I think from from the last uh, sessions we had, we, we had a lot of questions that were still pending. Uh, we had several things that people wanted to know about. You know, for me, I, I am I am freestyle and free speech. I always prefer that people come up with questions from any angle. As long as it's business related, I, I am more than willing to delve into any topic. I don't want us to make this too constrict and too concise. But again, if, 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 if there are questions out there, I'll be glad to take them in any way. If there are things that will have any... Uh, they need further understanding on, especially how to do business, how to get a business partner, how to raise funding, how to even create ideas, how to uh, you know engineer uh, projects, how to bring a team together, how to look for a mentor, how to keep a good mentor mentee relationship, how to mm. apply for jobs, whatever it really is. I'm I'm right here for you. All. Mm. I, I mean, it's 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 a lovely one. We're happy to hear that, knowing that we have varieties on the table today so we're not limited to just plenty and dole we have everything we can possibly crave for okay guys you heard it you heard it directly from the source from the boss himself okay so you might want to start asking your questions i have some questions that i prepared i did prepare just so that okay um, we take them pending um, when you guys send your questions in the comment cara ronnie hi cara it's been a long time Hi, it's good to see you on here. Um, yeah, so we have Tumla Betila. Hi, Tumla. Hi, darling. Hi, Sue Adeline. I see you all. Just keep sharing the video, okay? And remember, there's no limit to how many times you guys can share. You can always share and share and share, okay? So let me get to um, the questions that I share. Opportunities in um, the, the Cameroon landscape for business. Um, Roland, tell us. What are those opportunities that you would say are available, okay, when it comes to um, business in Cameroon? Um, yes, I think I think that's a that's a that's a good topic to to kick off with. Uh, I say so because uh, I, I like I like to I like to take time to. Uh, I like to take time to be able to enlighten people on the opportunities that Cameroon has. Yeah, uh, um, just, just you before know, you go on, I'm sorry that I have to correct you. Um, can you, somebody says they want to see your handsome face a bit more on the screen, like you're a bit further from the screen. Can you try as much as possible to really be close to your camera, please? Yeah, we like that, guys. They like to see that voice, that guys. So you can't be hiding your that lovely face. We know it's taken, but hey, they still want to see it. So don't be hiding it. <laughs> you know, we've got crazy first persons on this platform, right? So just bear with us, okay? <laughs> much love, so guys. Much love. Pom heart. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I see the lovely comments, but hey, we are. Today's not about me. It's about Mr. Roland Formulan. So hey, get don't then get distracted. Yeah, Roland, over to you. Yes, what I was saying is uh, in Cameroon, for example, it's one of those countries where a lot could be done and very little is being done. You see, uh, many of us spend time talking about what is not done, but we are not looking at what could be done. Oh, wow. And because we are not looking at what could be done, there are many others who are taking advantage of that. I, I, I will stand to challenge people that Cameroon is one of the best places to do business. Mm. And yeah. Do yeah, you mean you, that? You, 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 or you're just no, trying I to patronize it. us? No, 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 no. Or you're just trying uh, to be a patriotic citizen? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, uh, Delhi, by now you should know me. I, I say it the way I feel it and the way I see it. <laughs> uh, I am saying this because it happens right now that there are many, there are very few of, few of us 
on the terrain doing it, but it seems as though we are not doing anything because we are so few. Uh, oh. Yeah, we are so few. I mean, um, I, I have been on the Cameroon land, business landscape for the last 10 years. I can tell you who has been on, who has been off. I mean, you, mm. you yourself, you've been following the trend. Imagine yeah. the people that were online with us, you know, five years ago, they're no longer here. Mm -hmm. Many people who started businesses in different domains have switched those businesses to what mm -hmm. it is now. And many of them are sinking, you see. Uh, and there's a lot that is going on. People tend to blame emphasis on the wrong, the wrong entity. Oh, business is not good. Government is that. This is that. But it is not that because... Every day the Chinese is coming to Cameroon to do business. Every day the French is in Cameroon to do business. Every day the Russian is here. Every day the British is here. Every day the Americans are here. What do you think they see that we are not seeing? Mm. It is very important. Cameroon is the one place that you can you can live from zero to a hundred in in a day, mm. uh, and without any reservation. I think I think with with the effects of Corona, many people are beginning to realize that everything that we were being told that by the West was more of just an illusion. You know, uh, things mm. are breaking down. You know, people now are transitioning to what I call uh, 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 an illusionary currency. I mean, everyone is looking at the crypto, at bitcoins, and everyone's looking at artificial foods going to Mars. They are moving away from the realities, and and you, it, it shouldn't take you too long to to see that. But yeah. Africa is still that one place where we still have everything still natural. We still have natural food, natural jobs, natural life. Everything is still so natural. And Cameroon plays a very, very critical role in that because, like I say, Cameroon is Africa in miniature. Right. Cameroon is the only country in all of Africa that has all climates that Africa has. You see, from north, south, east, west, center, the climate is different. But it is representative of every other part of Africa, which means that Wherever you are in Africa, you can experience that in Cameroon. Mm. And that's what many people are taking advantage of. Many companies are coming into Cameroon. Why? Because they realize that they can create, they can create an environment for their business that is similar to the environment they had in other places, be it in, in the Western world, be it in East Africa, be it in South Africa. That's happening right here. If you look mm. at, if you go to the uh, investment promotion agency, Look at how many business forums have been organized in Cameroon. There's mm -hmm. so much that is going on. Uh, but again, we are not paying attention to the details of it. We are more or less distracted by what media is doing. And media is doing its job. Media is there to distract you. Media is there to give you some good distraction. And that's what most people are not seeing. You know, uh, today you wake up, there is a fight. Today you wake up, there's a quarrel. Today you wake up, there's that. But uh, the fundamental aspects of it, uh, we are not getting it. So going to the nitty gritty, um, investments in, in agriculture in Cameroon, believe me, I, and I will, I will not say agriculture because I am in it. I, am, I will say that because I have been in agriculture and I see the way forward. Um, the challenges we have are, are enormous, uh, mm. enormous. Cameroon alone is the only country that can feed five countries around us from Congo to Equatorial Guinea to Chad, Central Africa, Nigeria, Gabon. None of those countries are producing. Cameroon is the only country producing amongst all these countries. Do you, we you even know me? all of these things? Do we know all of these facts, Roland? Do we know them? Because when you're talking uh, about this, it feels like it's a different country, not the same Cameroon that you and I were born in. Like that, right. sometimes you say these things and I'll be like, hmm, is this guy making up all of these things? Because for so for a long time now, we have bought the into the notion that it's a barren land. There's nothing that can come for it and from it. And every all one of us wants to live the dream, the Cameroonian dream, which is not investing in Cameroon, which is not taking opportunities, um, advantage of the opportunities we have in there. It is rather to travel to another country, which unknown to us is rather benefiting you know they are they, they're benefiting from what we have more like we're leaving we're moving away from the source and um, and to 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 well to wherever you 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 yeah. get it i know there are a lot no, of people I, in the comments who really they, they're doubting if these things you're seeing are really no no no, no. I, I, or I, one, I, one I, country I, in space that you came yes, from no, I, I i like i like the comments that are coming up and i like to give these conversations because they are very sensitive the things that I normally share are not things that you learn in any school. 
the things that I normally have to talk about are things that no conference would tell you that. Uh, right. And I like just just like Tino Guanya, I think she she shared the same sort of concern, though using different words. That it's easy to say so, but practically, I think business in Cameroon is difficult. At her own point of view, but of course, you want to debunk that and let us know yes. that they are opportunities. Yes. Yes, Delhi, I, uh, I I get that. I mean, I get these questions every day. I, I, I have a very good online presence, so I read a lot of the comments and queries that people have. Uh, you have to understand one thing, and, and I will take you back a little bit into history. Right. Why are we where we are today? Why are things the way they are? This is this is not just natural. There are a lot of things that are man-made. I, I, I always like to draw emphasis on the fact that the colonial power and the colonial, the effects of colonialism on us will go a long way in us. Even maybe a hundred years, we may not be able to break that. God forbid. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a sad reality. And it, it's sad because if we've gotten to a point where we as Cameroonians, Africans, don't even want to accept that because it has gotten to a point where it is, it is we've gotten so sensitive about it. There's somebody who will say, okay, you know what? Yes, leave it the way it is. I like it like that. Uh, it's okay. I would rather live like this and take it and go like that. But that's not the solution. The solution is actually being able to separate rea reality from illusion. What is right. it that others are doing that we are not doing? Because right. if you go to Rwanda, we are here thinking that Rwanda is, is the best country in Africa. Go to Rwanda, you find Rwandans that want to leave their country. Go to South Africa, you find South Africans who say that their country is, is worse. Mm -hmm. Go to America, you find Americans who say that, you know, this country is, is hell, you understand? Every place has its ears. You come to the UK, you know it. There are people who say that UK is the worst country. Yeah. You understand? Anywhere in the world, any those citizens, they don't, it's like they say, you know, you don't see the good in your own backyard. You always see it from a distance. Of course. But we have to get to a point where we begin to see the good in our own backyard. Because look at what happened in Chad a couple of days, and now you have refugees running into Cameroon. Look at what has happened in Central Africa, but you have refugees running into Cameroon. To them, Cameroon is a safe heaven. But to us, we look at Cameroon as it's a dead end, you see? So the key thing is, what is it about Cameroon that we can identify and understand it? I mean, we are not, we are talking about the business not being good in Cameroon. I have, I have had an opportunity to liaise with a lot of business people in Cameroon, young and old. And believe me, these guys are making a killing. You mm. ask yourself, what is it that they are doing that we are not doing? You understand? Um, I think people need to get detached from the distractions that tell them that there's nothing good in Cameroon because believe me, every day there is something happening in Cameroon. Do you understand okay. that? Do you hold on? Do, do you understand that China alone has has over 66 million hectares of land in Africa? And of the six million hectares, 40% of it is in Cameroon. So what do you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm taken uh, about by these statistics that you give. And of course, like I said, I know that you have empirical data. And so when you talk, I listen like that. Okay. But like I said, it's 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 shocking to most of us hearing these things, you know. And to think that this is how much of our future is being mortgaged every day, it's really disheartening. I don't know if you saw the comments on the screen prior to you making the last point, but I would love for you to just round up with what you're saying and then maybe we touch on it before you, you pick up again. Yes, what, 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 what I was going to end up saying is uh, we, we need to understand that the issues that we face today are not issues of today. They are issues of way back yesterday mm. uh, that many are reluctant to fix. And also many people preach the sad aspects of Cameroon as a way to market. Somebody will tell you that, oh, agriculture is the worst thing to do, but they are into farming. Somebody will tell you that, oh, Cameroon businesses are bad, you cannot do business because of taxation, government. But those same people are those investing big money into Cameroon. I mean, we hear yesterday there was a Cameroonian company that closed an investment deal for $3 million. Um, three weeks ago, there was another business that closed for $2 million. These are young businesses. Right, how, how do, do we get that... this this information? Because sometimes we feel it is just limited to those the bush the bourgeoisies. <laughs> no, it, <laughs> like it, you that, people. You know, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, you know. Is, so yeah. sometimes when when it's 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 gone before we get to know about it, 
You get what I'm saying? No. Like, oh, there's yeah, this job in, 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 within a, a company and we're just putting out the advert out there for formality. And before the outsiders get to know about it, those within have taken advantage of it. It sounds more like that to us because we hear that these companies are closing deals on a daily, but we don't know how to go about it. Maybe you want to shed some light on that. Guys, no, guys, do I speak yes. your mind? Do I let me know in the comments, okay? So that I don't let him go. He's not leaving here until he tells us where and how this money is made, man. We want this cash too. We want to make money. Yes. We want to be, yes. you know, pioneers in these things too, man. Yes, Roland, sorry about that. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. You see, um, we you, in your opening speech, you said, of course, uh, people we should get up views up to 100 and you made a disclaimer that you understand that people don't really when it comes to business people don't pay but it was like you know hide my identity people are on it i mean that already tells you something um this news is everywhere we have it on facebook on twitter it's on the internet everywhere but people just people have been you know sidelined to choose what they want to see on the internet even mm -hmm. when you see someone has made an investment or has closed a deal you don't care about that you're like oh no ah, that man he has their own way but when it's something that concerns, you know, backbashing people, insulting people, fighting, yes, everyone is so interested in that. I mean, gossip blogs and, and, and sabotage blogs are the best. You understand? But if it had anything to do with, like, what we're doing right now, very few people will come on, very few questions will be on, and very few real, uh, you know, questions will be asked. And that's just an issue that we're facing because we have refused to ask the fundamental and the right questions. We all just want to have the things that don't make that make us not to think a lot. And that is a big problem because mm -hmm. there's so many things that are happening, but we are just not paying attention. And yes, I am glad to share that every now and then. I am glad to talk about the many things. And yes, I see a lot of comments coming up. I will be glad to go through each and every question that there is. So if any one of you has any questions out there, whatsoever related to business, I'm right here for you guys. Okay. Thank you so much, Roland. I mean, I mean, I, I, I understand the frustration which comes with this. Take out the time to want to educate people free of charge and they're nowhere to be found. You know, they always found wanting. And the next minute they're complaining and giving the same sort of complaints when the answers are very glaring. Um, I, I have a lot of you in the comments, okay, talking about Sino Nguana is saying that 40% um, Forty percent of the land in Cameroon is because the government prefers to sell um, to the highest bidder, who are foreigners, than to encourage her youths who can't afford such. Roland, what would you say um, to, regarding this comment? If, if the government—I don't know how true this is—if the government prefers to sell the land to foreigners, how then do these youths um, um, come in? How do they benefit? How do they? How do you expect them to drive when everything is being hijacked like that? I, th I guess that's Delhi. what Tino Nguanya is, Nguanya yes, is Delhi. saying. Delhi, Delhi, this is one thing I, I will tell you. Anybody who ever has to talk about business in Cameroon, especially small business, and complain, their first complaint is government, then they are not serious. Sorry to say that. Um, there is so much, there is so much that you can do without any government interference. I dislike the fact that people want everything to be done by government or with government. It, 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 it just doesn't make any sense anymore. Every complaint is about the government, but ask yourself, who is the government? We are the government. You are the government. You understand? Uh, and it's, it's very practical. Um, you, cannot, you, they, they, you cannot say that, oh, I mean, there was a time that I thought that, okay, to see the prime minister, I had to go through different routes to get a meeting with the prime minister. Mm -hmm. But I realized that it was all I needed to do was to go to his office, fill up a demand to see him. And two days after, I was with the prime minister. You see, but, you know, initially someone made me understand that, oh, to see the prime minister, I have to talk to this person, this person, I have to see this person. No, we are so used to going through somebody to get to something in this country. So many things are so direct. It's, it's, it's different. And I, I might be saying this and you think I'm just saying it. No, I, I have, I, anybody who has come to me, I have given you that pass. I have introduced yeah. anybody in any way I can do that, either online or in person or by phone, and it has always happened. It's just that we, you know, many people talk reported speeches. Somebody will sit somewhere and hear somebody saying that, oh, Cameroon is that, 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 that. They ask them the same thing. They, they will repeat the same thing that someone just said, not because they know exactly what it is. 
If I say what I'm saying, I say it because of my own practical experiences. And I'm not saying it because I have had any favors. I have not had any money from the government. I have not had anything easy with the government. And I like it that way because I have never wanted anything easy my way. I like right. to work for what I have. And that's why I work very hard for everything that I am today. But people will just believe that, no, you have to sit and be handed stuff. Nothing good comes easy. I don't like when people will just have to say, okay, no, uh, government is that, government is that. No, 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 no. There's a lot that you can do with that government. Is gone. As a matter of fact, and this is just, we are talking here online. There is so much that a government cannot do that allows many people to do many things. I don't know if that makes any sense. You see, we still have a, we still have a system that still has a lot of voids. It's still very fragmented. There's a lot that the government cannot even trace and track and do. You see, so it's not as if they have an eye. I mean, look at you are in the UK. The moment you have a speeding ticket, your name is already in the record all the way to the, the Queen's Palace, right? Um, you're in the US, you have a, a little domestic violence, everybody already knows. Like in Cameroon, you, there's still, that's what I'm saying. You know, there is still so much that you can do without the attention of everything. The thing is, most people just believe that business, you have to do business with government. No. There's a certain level of business. If you're going to do business at having a, a share capital of one billion, okay, yes, that begins to become a problem. But if you're doing small startup businesses and doing your stuff, just focus on the small communities in which you are and then target them and then sell your product. Is that easy? I mean, there are people who have risen from zero to 100 without nobody even getting to know them. The problem we have in Cameroon is today is that you have a young person who starts a business, next thing tomorrow they are online, next thing tomorrow they are receiving awards for best that, that, that. Next thing is that they want to attend conferences and teach everybody how they failed when they have not even succeeded in their own business. <laughs> and that's something that just, it doesn't sit well with me. Look at many right. people who want to tell everybody how to do business. Find out how many businesses have they done. Business in Cameroon is something that takes time. You cannot start a business and in three years you say you've succeeded because you still have many more years to fail. Business in Cameroon takes time. It takes diligence. It takes patience. It takes consistency. If you've not been able to run a business for at least 10 years, don't say that you've succeeded in business. And that's something that many people are failing to learn from. Okay. Um, Rich Roland, um, thank you for that um, insightful one there. I I guess we would have more of it as we go um, along. Um, we were on having the different opportunities um, and that we can possibly have, um, business opportunities that we can possibly have in Cameroon as far as um, um, business is concerned. So you 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 started talking about it you did not give more like examples because i knew every year is itchy now like okay so i'm here i'm back and you said you talked about you traveling from the u.s to cameroon you're settled you've been there for a while and you're doing really well so another person would want to those of us who are still here we want to we want to be encouraged to 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 do us uh, to follow suit but what are those opportunities like really give out outline them to show that they are there you know that we can you know take advantage of um, um of them while i get yes. to forget more of the comments yes um uh, uh there are there are there are so many like i said in, in, in my opening statement there is so much that could be done in in cameroon but very little has been done like i can say on a scale of one to a hundred cameroon we are still at about two percent I swear. Uh, I say this because I see these opportunities all every now and then, uh, and I just wish that we could find many ways to capture them. I think the one challenge that Cameroonians are facing is that we don't yet know how to work together. And because of that, because we don't know how to work together, we are failing in so many things. Every Cameroonian is so individualistic. Everybody wants to do their own thing, and it creates a challenge. It creates a big challenge. And I'll say this. Uh, in the U.S., right? And this is something I learned from my Chinese friends. When I was in the U.S., um, I have Chinese classmates who, when they leave U, uh, China to come to the U.S., they come and they get together, about 10 of them. They rent an apartment. Uh, they, rent, they buy an apartment, sorry. And then they live on the first floor, for example. They can buy a four-floor building. So they come, 10 of them. They put their money together, buy three floors. They live on the first floor. And they rent out the two floors. At the top what happens after four or five years when they graduate they sell their apartment everybody makes money and everybody goes home 
and they all go and start businesses. You would think that these guys come from wealthy families. No. When you get to talk to them, they're just as guys struggling like just like me and you struggle just to get there. But the problem, but the typical Cameroonian, you get to America, no, everybody wants to get their own house. They want to get two, three, four, five rooms. They want to get two, three, four, five cars. So individualistic. And that mindset even happens to us right here. And mm -hmm. I think my last session, I talked about the key to succeeding in business is creating a team. Get a team that will handle your business and go forward. Nobody yeah, I remember invest, that clearly. Yeah. yeah. Nobody would invest one million in any business if you not you don't have a team. It's just being realistic. What if I give you money, Delhi, and tomorrow Delhi is incapable of making that money back? I mean, this is business. You understand? I need to know that okay, Delhi has a backup. But Cameroonians know we don't even know how to look for teams. People have all sorts of friends, but they tell you that they don't have business partners. What do you have friends for? Why, why do you keep the friends you have around you if they cannot work <laughs> with you in business? I mean, I, I see know. people spending so much time. You find people will sit and drink about 2 million francs CFA in one night. But on that <laughs> same table, ask them to invest in something. Nobody has any idea. No one has any initiative. That is the problem. We have not learned to work together. We are not even willing to work together. We don't even want to find ways to be together. Then how do we think we can succeed? You will never find a Chinese investor coming here by themselves. You never find a French investor coming here by themselves, an American investor, a Russian investor. They're always in groups. Look at the Lebanese. The Lebanese, they run the, 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 our entire economy. I mean, they run the entire economy. All mm -hmm. great businesses in Cameroon are owned by the Lebanese. How come is that? Leban Lebanon is a war torn country. How come they're here and they're doing business more than everyone? How can the Lebanese be here and they cook better food than the Cameroonians who are here? Like, why should I prefer to go to a Lebanese restaurant? And, and 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 not go to a Cameroonian restaurant. So there's so many things that we are not doing. It's either that those of us who get end up start businesses, we end up not being consistent. I mm -hmm. mean, go to a Cameroonian run business, customer service is something that you, you, I mean, you cannot even bear, you know? It's, it's just like that. And it, 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 it's, it's something that it's not just the, the entrepreneurs, even the people that you have to employ. And you have to understand that we haven't yet had a professional work ethic in the country. So there are so many things that uh, are not going right, but we cannot complain about that. What we should rather do is, how do we create a system that works for us, works for our businesses? If you live in Bamenda, how do you create a system that works for businesses in Bamenda? Same as in Yaoundé, same as in Ebolowa, same as in Betua and Marua, all these places. I think I think what, what needs to happen is, is how we can unify the knowledge that we have. And what you're doing, Delhi, it's amazing. Uh, I really enjoy coming on here despite my very, very, very strained uh, schedule. I love this because, believe me, this is one way I believe that if many of us are talking the right ways to do things, then many people will go on to start doing things the right way. And mm -hmm. I really hope that, you know, we don't just talk here in vain. And I don't talk because I need any popularity. I talk because, believe me, if there are many more people doing business with me, then it makes sense for all of us. It does. You see, in the next 10 years, in the next 10 years, we have to run this country without any doubt. But how do we want to run the country if we are so individualistic? I mean, the Chinese, the French, the Americans, they're coming here, and these guys are coming with monies. They're coming with power. I mm -hmm. mean, to have a government, someone in government would rather lean towards these guys because these guys would come and do things that have to be done. You see, I believe that if we have to sustain Cameroon for tomorrow, it requires many more of us. I mean, look at, for example, I am into greenhouse farming. I started greenhouses in 2014. Up to this very moment, there is nobody who has been able to rise up to the point where we can handle business together. The few people who have come up, right, they're actually trying to compete with me. And I have made it time and again. And it's, it's hard, you know. It's so you don't, you don't it's so in the sad in that this is business, what we do. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. In greenhouse business, you don't compete with me. You compliment me. And I'm ready. I, I share everything that I do. I open up markets. I've shared all business secrets. Literally, Greenhouse has been the an right open way. book from yeah. inception to date. From, from I mean, I'm, I'm, I can testify. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you even come here, it's still Greenhouse that we were just leveraging the, 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 the Greenhouse yeah. um, but, ventures. But, but again, but again you, have people who come, you have people who will come, and then the next thing they go behind, they want to hire my employees, they want to go to my market. And I look at them in my life. And then when things go wrong, they start to complain, oh, greenhouse business, or oh, for them. No, that is not the way it works. We can only do this if we grow stronger, if we grow together. It is a philosophy that the Jews have used. 
the Americans have used, the Russians, the Asians, everyone is using it, but Africans. Now you understand why I said the effects of colonialism would go a long way in us. What happened in 1884 in the Benin Conference, my dear, <laughs> believe me. The <laughs> Pakistan Africa, that, that, no, that thing, that thing, that, there's a yeah, comment yeah, on no, the that screen. Thing, that, that thing is going to go a long way because today we continue, we, we don't see value in us. You see, you are there daily. You already have followers up to 100 and something. Why would I, I expect that people should, I mean, your platform should be a platform for everyone advertising on your platform. But someone will say, no, why is Delhi taking all that money by herself? I'd rather go and get some Indian guy to be running my SEO on my platforms. And you have that. It is, it's just crazy. You know, Roland is doing greenhouses, but people will come to me, get my quotations, and then go to Turkey, and then get a quotation. And then when they import from Turkey, it doesn't work. They come back and start asking me foolish questions. You, you have that every now and then. You see? It, so it, it's a big problem. So the problem is not Cameroon. The problem is Cameroonians. Because you mm. go to Nigeria, and Nigerians will complain the same thing. You go to China, you go to Chad, everyone has this complaint about their own constituency. But how do we make sure that where we are right now, things can work in our own favor? Is if we find ways to work together, we find ways to unify our knowledge, we find ways to collaborate in ways that do not hurt, but build one another. Palm hearts, guys. Thank you so much, Roland. That was, that was a powerful one, man. <laughs> I just held myself from laughing. There's a comment on the on the screen which is encouraging. I think you would like to see that. Um, she says that I'm thinking of relocating to the to Dibombari um to do some three months farming pepper. You inspired me through your greenhouse. Um, that's a young of them. So you know these these are your. I mean there there are lots of people who look up to you, Mr. Roland. I and I think that even many more who would want to, just maybe they don't know how to go about it. Um, before we get into um, more of those opportunities that we know, you and I know are available in Cameroon, can we talk of how possible it is to get um, into Greenhouse, maybe own shares, maybe, um, you know, how to start off things like Greenhouse as well? Can we talk a bit on that before we get into other things? Yes, yes. Um, a young, a young. I know. I think the last session she she was on, and we followed up even after the session. Uh, I know she's into farming, and uh, I mean anyone who is anything to do with agriculture, I, I like I like to encourage them uh, because believe me. And Delhi, just let me just take a moment to share light on this. This is what Af this is what agriculture in Cameroon holds for the future. Mm. Today, Cameroon is about 27 million people. Uh, it is estimated that by 2040, the world is going to double up. It's going to increase to about 9 billion people. Uh, Africa has the fastest growing population, which means that we Cameroonians, we Africans, we are growing at a faster rate. But what is happening in Africa? The amount of arable land is reducing. The amount of farmers on the farms are actually reducing. Our parents, who are the ones farming right now, they're not willing and ready to farm in the next 10 years again. So what is happening? There is going to be a void that is being created, which means that there's going to be a demand for food and nobody to produce food. Mm. Uh, and then imagine that we have five countries around us, a total population of about 420 million people that are going to be hungry. Um, there's no way, there's no day that Equatorial Guineans would want to get into farming, or Gabonese, or Congolese, or Chadians, all these guys, they depend on Cameroon. And now, this is where Cameroonians should play a part. And to understand the profit in, in agriculture, take for example, you take a seed of corn. You plant that seed of corn. It grows to a corn plant and produces five cups of corn, for example. And each cup has about 500 grains on it. That's you having one grain that has multiplied over 500 times. That's what it is. And unless you see that, then you would understand how valuable it is. The mm -hmm. only problem with agriculture in Cameroon is that people have not learned to monetize or to valorize the agriculture. You ask a typical farmer, what is the cost of your production? They don't know it. They don't know the cost, the value of the land, the depreciation of the land, how much time they spend, how much they spend in seeds. No, they just care about, oh, I rent land for this amount, I buy seeds, and I sell for this amount. Nobody cares. The mm -hmm. second aspect is that people are not yet taking time to understand the market. How come only two regions in Cameroon are actually producing food for Cameroon? And that's the Northwest and the Western region. You go to the Southwest, food that is being consumed in Limbe, for example, 
comes from the western region or from the northwest. So food leaves the northwest the west, comes to Douala, and then those from Limbe come and buy from Douala uh, to Limbe. How come is that? When Limbe has one of the most fertile soils in all of Africa, we get soil, Jelly, let me tell you something. We get soil from Limbe and sent to Nigeria. So Nigeria buys soil from us in Limbe to Nigeria to cultivate food. But wow. in Limbe, we're, you not, don't mean we're it. not producing. I know, I'm very serious. That these are just things that you know they're tiny, but you, how why, how come Dangote is in Cameroon and he is in Limbe? This is the richest black man on earth, and he chooses all places that he can go to. He's in Limbe. Does that ring a bell to us? There is a place in Limbe today that you have all the big guys have bought land. Even the president has land there, the city, the second, the, the, the guy at the Senate, the guy at the National Assembly. The president of Equatorial Guinea has land, governors, all these guys in Limbe, for example. And you ask yourself, what is it that these guys are seeing in this place that we are not seeing? You understand? And all the lands, they have farmers on that land doing farming. Mm. Think about it. You have all the supermarkets that are coming into Cameroon today, but go to them. Who are those supplying to them? There are civil servants that are supplying. You don't have young people who graduated from agricultural school doing farming. So the problem that agriculture has in Cameroon is that the agriculture, the person who is a producer on the ground is not the marketer, and the person who is a marketer of the agricultural produce is not the producer. What is that the person who studied agriculture is not actually the agri entrepreneur. The person who is a civil servant who has made some money is the, ag is the agri entrepreneur. There is no way you can be a medical doctor, you open up a clinic, and you're not there and you expect that clinic to work. That's the problem we're facing with agriculture nowadays in the country. The, the wrong people are doing the right investments for the right field. And the wrong people are just working in it. And that's just a big issue. So it's a conundrum. And until we can get to that point where we understand what it takes to make all of this happen, then we go for it. I mean, where we are right now, we stand, we have demands. I, I, like people will say, oh, the, we have demands that are exorbitant. We, we, we have demands we cannot even meet. It probably will take me like three years to meet a demand that we have on our hands. And every day I would open up and say, hey, listen, if you have land, if you can produce this, I would buy, I would provide a market for anything that you could produce. But people would just come, write two, three comments, and they go. People would rather want to invest in cryptocurrency because, yeah, it's a passion thing everybody wants to get in. People want, everybody wants to do scamming because, yeah, it's a thing that seems. But you have to understand, you know, to be happy is to be at peace with yourself. And, and I tell people, sometimes it's not about this physical currency that we make. The currency that is really ours is that of the mind and is the peace of mind. You know, why don't you find ways to make money that you don't have to look behind every now and then to find out who's looking at you, who's chasing you? <laughs> and agriculture Are just they has listening, something my that... dear? Do they listen? Do these things even mean yeah, yeah. anything? See, that, like, thing, do, you, you know, listen... do people even still listen to this sort of yeah. quote-unquote gospel? Yeah. Every you now want to quit, get rich quick scheme. Exactly. Sort of. It's hard to Everything hear them sit and listen, you know, to, no. to people who are really doing these things like that. You know, I it's it's the easy way out. It's about making money and it's it, you know. And, and yeah, we, I mean what well, we, we we wonder why we keep perishing every day like that, you know. Um, there's a comment on the screen by Manque Lillian. She says that Mr. Roland, I don't know if you can see the screen, Mr. Roland yeah, still did not screen. tell us the juicy areas of investment in Cameroon. I don't know if you want to yeah. stay on there to clarify how yes. that, of course. No, I'm, many I'm, 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 I'm getting to it. I mean, usually what I like to do is that I don't like to give direct answers because we are so versed and gullible with direct answers. Because Roland Fomunan says, invest in plantains, somebody will go and buy 1,000 hectares of plantains and do plantains. <laughs> Tell see, me about it. Copy yeah, and paste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People don't want to have to think. What I want to do is that I want to give a platform for reasoning. I want people to be intuitive. You know, what works in Ebolowa may not work in Douala. Mm. So look at where you are. See what you have. Look at, like, the key thing I always say is find friends who would invest in you in business. There is everything. I mean, do you know that the largest daily, do you know that the, the largest export of vegetables in Cameroon is cassava leaves? Um, yeah, I think I think I saw. Yeah, yeah. Good. But who who believes that? Who could think of that? Whoever thought of that? 
These are things that you see them driving every now and then, but people don't even see. We don't, we don't eat it. Okay, most mostly the people in the in the central region eat, but you would think that it is insignificant. No, it's the largest export out of Cameroon, and it's as easy like that. Imagine you have a cassava from all you're doing is harvesting the leaves and selling. That is money. You see, so I cannot. I, I hope I mean, that you guys I, I mean, are taking notes, guys, because this is this is one he's just mentioned. Like he said, he doesn't want to give direct answers like that. But hey, this one has outrightly been direct, and somebody can take it. Just leverage on everything coming from Roland, and and you guys, you you you. There's no how you make a mistake. What Roland tells you about business and entrepreneurship, guys, you can take it to the bank. I say that I know what I'm saying. Okay. So for the few of you who are here, it's okay, okay? But take advantage of these things and, 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 and come on, change your lives with it. It's a lot of youths out here coming on this platform and it's disheartening to see you guys on here and it's all about relationships. Oh, this boy broke my heart. That boy broke my heart. The person don't give me belay run. The other person be calm. He said he wants to marry me. He will not marry me again. And this and all of these things. And then... You're asking yourself, where is the empowerment that we're talking about? This year, guys, you all know, we talked about self-love. And one of which is empower, financially empowering, empowering yourself. And these are people who can strategically position you in Cameroon to do better with your lives, okay? So do not take this time for granted. If you data, if you're running out of data, come on, top up again and, hey, connect. And, and, and benefit from these things. So yeah, Roland, I don't know if you want to keep on with that or you want yeah. to come no, back no, no. later. Yeah, just, I mean, yeah, regarding just, the just to, just, yeah, just to just to just to round up on that. You see, I I I, I have gotten to a point where I've made friends with with, with several personalities, uh, and and I'm friends with a lot of you know, uh, like you said, the Bamblike guys, and uh, it's it's just amazing to understand the mindset that they do have. You see, a typical kid from the West, right out of high school, in their mind, they have to start saving money. They call it the Anjangi. And all they want to do is that as they grow, they want to identify five, 10 people that they will start the Anjangi with. It doesn't matter if it's 1,000, 10,000, 20,000. No, it's not a problem. And that's how they do it. And the moment they can identify that group, they get together, put their monies together. Next thing is that they do a business. One person takes that money, runs a business, brings it back. The next person takes it, runs a business, brings it back. And that's how they grow it. And they work on trust. And it is something that many of us do not have, you see. Uh, and that is the challenge. So when it comes to doing business in Cameroon, there is so much. And uh, uh, let, me, let me give you a scenario about a particular market. Take, for example, Douala alone, we have about 5.2 million people in Douala, in littoral region. And imagine that you have a business that supplies food only to 1,000 people a week. Right. And imagine that 1,000 people a week, each person consuming at least 10,000 francs. I'm talking about the middle class. That is 10 million you're making every week, tax-free. You understand? And this is, you're talking from about 1% of the entire population, not even from some great deal of people. So where am I trying to get to with this? There are opportunities everywhere. You only have to be able to niche size of your market and then supply to them. That's mm -hmm. what the Chinese come and do. The Chinese would go to Betua and they will sell whatever they're selling there. They go to Marwa, they go to anywhere. And that's what it is. People will just believe that, no, I want to do business. I want to start small. I want to be big tomorrow. No, no, no. no. It is the mistake that everyone is making. When I moved back to Cameroon, I, start, I was doing, I mean, you know it. I was in my village. That is why I did business. I operated out of my village until the crisis came. And when I was in my village, I had Nigerians who came all the way to my village to buy my produce. When you have something that is good, the market comes to you. You don't even Not have to really. run to market. And that's what we do today. We don't, we, I don't have to rush to sell. No, no, it comes to you. The problem is that people have not understood how to create value out of the little things that they do have. Everybody just wants to find cheap, you know, you know, like instant gratification making schemes to find out how they can make it. So there's a lot of that. So in terms of where businesses are, one thing is what not to do. Don't invest in any long cycle crops if you're doing agriculture. Leave that one, you know. The worst thing that the white man ever did to us was tell us about something they call cash crops. 
But you realize that all those who are into cash crops, they're actually very broke. Very, Do you know very, that? Yeah, like very, I'm like, broke, but we talk about broke. that. It's all, all the cash crop, cash crop, cash very crop. Broke. And yeah, it's yeah, yeah. limited to a particular region, uh, some particular regions in Cameroon. And you feel like, okay, and I need this massive amount of capital to start off with. That's that's really what's yeah. happening. But you're talking about cassava leaves and, and everybody's like, okay, what, what, what the hell is that? What, what am I going to do with cassava leaves and all of that? I, I want to start off a cocoa farm. I want to start off a coffee farm. I want to start off that plantation like that, you know. Guys, I hope that you, you're you taking notes on this, okay? I really, really do hope that you're taking and notes. Then, uh, yeah, Delhi, before I go up, uh, and then, you know, you have also things that are seasonal crops. People don't get it, you know. You, somebody would invest, you know, 20 hectares and do pineapple farm. It is a good thing to have 20 hectares and you see your pineapples flourishing. But the problem is the market. We have pineapples on 20 hectares. We have about 20,000 pineapple plants. They all getting matured at the same time. You have almost all at the same time. You have to sell all at the same time because they are ripening. But at the same time though, you are harvesting. Every other person is also harvesting their own pineapples. Mm. You realize that there is an excess on the market. And then there is nobody who's looking at transformation. Nobody's transforming, nobody. Everybody wants, and then tell me, I mean, how does it happen? That's why when it's pineapple season, you find things rotten by the road. When it's watermelon season, you find them being littered on the road. Mango season, littered. Orange season, everything like that. Everybody wants to do the same thing. Everybody wants to go into, I want to plant pineapples. I want to plant pineapples. No one doing transformation. I have a friend who is here who actually does, he's the only guy who does organic pineapple transformation. He is the only one along with the president that have organic, organic pineapple farms. And they transform everything to juices. Yeah, just two of them in the entire country. Every wow. other person wants to just do pineapples. And you see that. Same as plantains. Everybody's interested. Oh, I want to have hectares and plantains. But when the moment you're harvesting plantains, everyone is harvesting plantains. But you also understand that those who have been in the business for long, they already have their markets. So if I, am, have, if I do plantains and Delhi is my market, I would always sell to you. Regardless if somebody comes today and they want to do plantains, so sell to Delhi, no. Delhi will be like, no, I've been buying from Roland, that's it. So there's so many people who come in and then when they do that, they start complaining. The next thing is that people come in, invest in businesses in Cameroon and then leave it in the hands of their workers. No, you don't do that. Like I said, you don't have an, a hospital, you are a medical doctor, and then open it up and then allow nurses to run it. And then you're somewhere said, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a medical entrepreneur, I'm, right. I, have a, I have a hospital in Cameroon. No, 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 no. You have to be on the ground. Then you would be there and you start complaining, oh, this doesn't work. You have to understand that we Cameroonians, we have not learned certain levels of professionalism. Professional ethics, professional ways of life, we have not learned a lot of that. There's still so much that we have to learn. So mm -hmm. we still expect to be taught. That's why employee training is something that you must invest in at a very high cost. As a matter of fact, what handicaps this, most businesses in Cameroon is human resource. And you complain about that to a point where you don't do anything about it. On our end, we've op we just opened up a school, a greenhouse academy. I could not be thinking of opening up 1,000 farms when I don't have to go to manager's farms. But now what I'm doing is I'm training people and I guarantee that the moment you leave school, I get you a job. I don't, I don't, no one goes through my school to write a public exam. I don't even give you a curriculum to write any public exam. I give you a curriculum that you will come back and just work on the farm. I'm glad, you, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned um, the academy guys. You, um, Roland, you want to shed more light on that? It's a lot of people, like I said, they're interested in a, a lot of what you do. And I, I'm not sure I know more of this um, greenhouse academy that you started. Tell us, just give us, you were already on that. You might want to shed more light on it. Guys, if you're just joining, please share the video from hearts, okay, just to encourage him as he comes on here to, to dis dispense this, this wisdom. Um, if you don't know who he is, he is um, Roland Fomundam. Um, the name should be on screen. If not, let me see if I can take that off. That's his name. He's Roland Fomundam. He is the founder and the CEO of Greenhouse Ventures. He is uh, he's a lot of other things, okay? But uh, most importantly, he is this um, uh, uh, guy, Cameroonian, who is willing to, 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 to share that which God has blessed him with, with his fellow brothers and sisters. So you want to be here every Wednesdays and take advantage of what he is telling you. Um, guys, we, we're going to take a short break, okay? When we come back, we would be looking at still on the topic of... Um, 
um, the different opportunities that we have in Cameroon, um, how we can be positioned to target opportunities, um, how we can learn to start and succeed in businesses in Cameroon, how we can leverage on mentees and mentors a relationship to succeed. A short break and why we come back to not go anywhere. September is around the corner and there is no better time to embark on your journey for studies in the UK than now. Are you looking for an opportunity to study in the UK? Do you want to graduate as a critical thinker and to gain the skills employers are looking for? Do you want to study a course in the shortage occupation list of the UK? Would you like to gain work experience by taking advantage of a two years post-study work visa? Would you like to study a science, technology, engineering and mathematics degree to enable easy access to a permanent residence after graduation? FK Global Education Ventures got you covered. FK Global Educational Ventures will primarily evaluate, access and advise you on the necessary requirements of admission, assist you in choosing from over 300 courses, assist you gain admission into any university of your choice, helps you with your visa applications, assist you with accommodation, airport pickups and settling in in the UK. For more information, do contact us on the details you see on your screens. Thank you and God bless. Africa is a continent with abundant natural resources, but 90% of the population still lives under the poverty line. 65% of the population are small-scale farmers. They are feeding all of Africa and much of the world, but most are barely getting by every day. My name is Roland Fomunder. I grew up with my aunt in a small Cameroonian village where I saw her toil away every day of her life, but she, just like most farmers, was stuck in a cycle of poverty. The main problem is with the market system and lack of a modern farming infrastructure. My aunt could produce as many fruits and vegetables as she wanted, but at the end of the weekly market day, whatever she did not sell became waste. There was no way to preserve the food any longer, and it's still the same today. That is why my company, Jolla Venture, is creating a platform that would empower farmers with access to new technologies, capacity building training, and access to better markets. Our first product, the Soul Part, lets farmers dry fruits and vegetables in six hours instead of 400 hours using traditional methods. But this is the only first step. My plan is to revolutionize agriculture in Cameroon and West Africa. I will bring talent and technologies from American universities to take on these challenges at ground zero, something nobody else is doing. It is a long road ahead, but Jolla Venture is well on its way to changing the lives of millions of farmers. Yeah, I had that video of you. I hope you still remember. <laughs> Welcome well, back, guys. Was, Roland, are you was, there? That was, that was 2011. <laughs> <laughs> Sounding very, very much enlightened like it's yesterday, man. I mean, I'm really super proud. We are proud of you, man. We are. Just to take a few of the comments, okay? I know that a lot of you in the comment section who have um, um, maybe asked questions, one or two questions. Um, we have the issue of um, many people. That's Mbongong Valerie Tamba. He's saying the issue of many people focusing on, on one sector is because poverty has done a lot of damage in our communities. Everyone is pushed to venture into what's given cash now. Well um Oben Ayong is saying that the problem is not being on ground the problem is building a good system a system that does not allow managers to have access to cash cash is for the banks okay um yeah, let, me, have... let, me, let me let me let me let me enter with what Oben just said okay Mark Gwen yes. Ilian is saying greenhouse academy can we make money while studying that's an interesting question yeah. um so yeah let me project you said Lilian's question Lilian who, no, no, Oben, Oben. Oben, right. Um, the problem is, all oh, right, that's it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, he Guys, made a very before good Roland point. goes ahead, please, can you kindly share the video? You're not sharing. Pump hearts, pump him hearts, more hearts. We don't see hearts. We're not continuing this video. Okay, share the video, guys. If you're just joining, share. This is Business and Entrepreneurship with Roland Fomundam. We do this 
um, every after two weeks. And of course, because I mean, for now, we're going to be skipping one week, okay? Well, uh, we, we time. He, after re strategizing and putting a lot of things in order, then he will come up with maybe a new timetable. But for now, just, just check out this space, okay? Every Wednesdays on Delhi's matchups, you will see Roland Pomunan and myself talking about all your concerns regarding business and entrepreneurship. Share the video, guys. Keep sharing, keep pumping hearts, okay? Tag your friends, yeah, for them to come and learn free of charge. Thank you, Roland. The mic is yours. Again. Yes. Yeah, no, what I was going to say about, uh, about, about Oben, what he said about good systems. Um, it's a very important thing. We lack, we lack those systems in the country. Um, but those systems, we don't, the problem is that we expect the government to create those systems. Um, but you have a government that probably, doesn't also understand that need for that system, you see. So you, it's 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 like it's like you're expecting to get you're getting you're expecting to get hair out of a snake. It doesn't happen like that. <laughs> so I always advise if you're coming to business, first of all, start with the market. Once you understand your market, then you create a system to get to your market. It's very important. Guys, can you write these things down in the comments as he says them? Because a lot of other people are going to benefit from those things. Just writing the notes in the comments would go a long way, okay? So when he says that, for instance, what he has just said, okay, creating the right systems. And Roland, you said... Um, yeah, yeah, being able from, to... Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, the first thing is create your market. Create your market, you have that rather, market, yeah. yeah. You, you, once you create your market, you create a system that keeps you in the market. You see, when we came in with greenhouses, nobody cared about greenhouses. The government had actually the government has a very bad taste of on greenhouses because in 1995 the government invested about one billion on greenhouses and it failed and it was abandoned. So they never ever wanted to hear anything. But that you know that was actually a plus for me. I told myself that I will make them see the difference between what they had in 1995 and what I was bringing in 2015. And today, we the, the, the results are clear, you know. But if I had just given up on the fact that oh, government has tried this, it has not worked, so said, then it would never be anywhere we are today with greenhouses. Roland, well, mention that money what... again. Let me hear. <laughs> you said the government did what? Invested about yeah, how much? The, the the government spent. Let me tell you, the government spent one billion to buy two greenhouses in 1995. They are there in the corner. If you go to Iran, the corner, you see them there too. Two small houses like that. But of course, that's how things work. You know, you don't, we have, we we have to change that. You understand? And it didn't work. They abandoned everything. Wow. And they didn't want to hear anything about greenhouses. So when we started coming in, it was like, no, 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 no. But we never gave up. I even had a minister tell me right in my face that Roland, greenhouses are not for Cameroon. Take your greenhouses elsewhere. He even told me that, hey, um, the day I make greenhouses to work in Douala, then he will make it, you know, a nationwide policy for us to embark on greenhouses. This was the Minister of Agriculture at the time. But unfortunately, by the time I did a greenhouse in Douala, the guy was in exile, you know, and, and, and those are things that happen every now and then, you see. But <laughs> you don't, you will not, you will not blame that. I will not go out of business because the person who was supposed to endorse me is no longer there, you see. Hmm. Okay. Are we, are you there? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think I think I think talking about the idea of, of creating systems is, is very important. You have to create your market. Don't don't create a product and then you expect that oh there's a market that oh government. I mean that's where everybody fails. Everybody fails. Just like those who are into real estate. People there are some I see many people buying land today and then building big houses and then hoping that people go in for rent. Next thing is that oh we have no rental policies. People go in for rent and then they. They spoil the house. By the time you even start making money from the house, it has depreciated a lot. I mean, a, a normal real estate investment is at least 15 years to get your money back. Mm. And then by the time you get that money back, the issue is that it's already depreciating. The only thing that real estate does so well is to use that it gives you collateral. And that's the way business people do business now in Cameroon. You buy real estate, buy real estate get a rent to go to the bank, get a loan, and you just keep getting yourself in loans and loans and loans and loans and loans like that. And usually sometimes you don't even get out because you end up selling them, selling them, and then to a point where you go back to normal, unless you have to diversify your business. So there are a lot of things that people are looking at it, um, but they're not seeing it. And they're so flattered by 
There are too many people talking. I think a few days ago I wrote a post that said people are too many people are talking. You find someone who has never done agriculture telling you how to invest in agriculture, and you have to invest in agriculture. <laughs> you find someone who has never done anything to do in a digital space telling you that oh how to come and invest in digital space. Digital, but they have nothing to do in the digital space. They just have some groups of followers who are so loyal to them, and they want to talk, and they get paid for that. You find someone who has never even employed one person. Someone has never employed one person, but they want to tell you about how to run a human resource agency. And, and you just look at them like, why do people not do their homework? Why are we so desperate to have something that sounds good in our ears? People just want to hear something good. You it's have to at any conferences, it's conferences, it conferences it is, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it, is, it is so crazy. Like, you know, the thing is sad because it is affecting us. You know, some of us, we work so hard to make these things come to life, but it's as though we are not doing any work, you know? Uh, and it's just because you have other people who are clouding that space. But believe me, um, Delhi, you have a very good platform. You have very good followers. I expect that, you know, we don't need a thousand people to match on to do great things. If we can just have just 10 people or have just a hundred people doing great things in little ways, that's how change gets started. And yeah. that's where we can make a lot of things happen. And I believe that from the way you're doing it and many others who are coming up like you can follow suit. And together, I believe that we can make greatness out of the little goods that we do have uh, going on in our lives. Definitely, Roland, definitely. We're, we're obviously going to get there. OK, so we, we're, we're running short of time. So let us just go. Let's cut to the chase on the next one. OK, I know that with regards to the different opportunities that we have in Cameroon, these things, you will drop them as, as we go subsequently. Um, but can we just say, how how can we be positioned? How do you position us to target these opportunities that we have listed, that some of the ones you've just listed? How are we expected to be positioned? Because it's one thing to have these opportunities and yet another to strategically position ourselves to, 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 to leverage on them also. Um, how do we go about that? Yeah, the, the positioning has to start from within each and every one of us. Um, the first is people being realistic about, about everything uh, and people being true to themselves. We, 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 we lie to ourselves, lie to others to a point where nothing is truth anymore in this country. Uh, even you ask somebody even their name, they lie about it, even without even knowing. Um, wh wh why am I saying that? I'm saying this because... We, 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 we are not looking at what we need to be looking at. Um, positioning is very important. The first thing that we want to do with positioning is being open to the truth. Uh, people should attend the right conferences. Don't just attend a conference because your friend is attending. Don't just <laughs> attend a conference because you want to appear to have attended that conference. Um, people should actually go for what really means that much to them. That's one. And once we can have access to the right information, we start doing the right things. We start having the right networks. The second thing is that we need to collaborate with the right people. It makes no sense that, you know, we walk around with friends, but your friends are not involved in your business. If your friends and family cannot buy into your business, then you're not in business. You understand? Like, it is, it is, it is, it is candid. Like, I, that's how I get to know that someone is serious in business. I have so many people who come up to me that they want to get mentored. And I ask them, who is your business partner? Oh, sir, I don't have a business partner. But you have friends. I go on your Facebook page, you have about 2,000 friends. What are you doing with all those people? And you're going to have one person there that you can trust, that you can work with. Then you're not serious. Oh, no, you, you cannot tell me that they are not serious. Maybe you are not serious because you are the leader. If I, if I have a business here, Delhi, I would come to Delhi and say, Delhi, this is what I'm proposing to you. I would not expect Delhi to come to me and say, hey, Roland, I see what you're doing. Please, I want to be a part of that. No, mm. it has to be from me. I am the leader here. I am the one to make that proposal to you. So it makes no sense that you have people who run around, they want to do business, but they say they don't have partners. They don't even communicate. Then they have this French mentality of, uh, uh, and this goes most of the francophones, they, 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 their business model is what they call submarine, you know, or sous-marin, like they'll call it, which means that, okay, start a business, hide it, hide it, hide it, just keep sailing till it shows up. Very bad, <laughs> terrible, it's disgusting. I get sick to my throat when I hear people stand in a conference and tell people that, oh, everybody has to be Sumara. Like, just imagine, figure that out, that if you and I, Delhi, we're in an ocean and everyone is just sailing underwater, what will happen? We end up colliding underwater, right? That's mm -hmm. what's happening, like figuratively. And that's the way the Frenchman wants to do business. 
They want everybody hides what they're doing. That's why you look in Cameroon, you seem as if no one is doing anything because everybody's hiding everything and they're even hiding what is not even correct. Some people hide their business up to the point where they die with their business and it never made sense. And you will say, oh, government or tax. So they're hiding that. what but, is not correct. <laughs> yeah. Like, Daily, you, you see the way I do business. When something is wrong with me, I put it out there and I get comments. I learn a lot. Like, Daily, I have learned a lot online. Like, I think 80% of what I have learned in the business, I have learned it online because I have been able to share. And when you share, people, you also receive. It's, it's a rule of nature. Sure. You, you understand? Uh, just like what you do on your platform, the fact that people share their story. I have seen many people gain from financial support to medical support to many things on your platform because you can share your story. No matter how hard your story is, share that story. Let somebody get it. You never know who is there to listen to you. That's the way I've always done it. I share everything about my business. People say, oh, I'm calling competition. I don't have a problem. I need competition to keep myself viable in business. Exactly. And that's the way business should be run. Exactly. I don't fear competition. If I fear competition, then I am not in business. Then it is not even my business. And that's why I'm not even so I'm not even worried about anything. I am so far ahead with what I'm doing that many people think that they don't even know where I'm at. You understand? This is I have this is 10 years plus that I've been doing this. You have someone who comes yesterday and they started and they think that they, no, no, no. I'm not even worried about that. So I can share you everything. I can give you my entire business plan. There's nothing you can do with it. If somebody steals your business, then it's never your business. You probably stole it from somebody. Mm -hmm. You see, so we have to learn how to trust one another, but to work with one another. So being positioned is how to work with people, because once you can work with people, then it opens up many more doors to you. It opens up doors for more creative ideas. It opens up doors for financing. It opens up doors for markets. You see, um, lately I, I have gotten to realize that there is just a tiny network of people who are doing almost everything. I get to realize that the same people who come to come to me to buy, the same people who come, they're the same group, one and the same people. And you tell yourself, where is the rest of the crowd? What are they doing? What is it that is distracting them from what is really happening? Mm -hmm. So positioning everything is, everywhere is good. I have seen the person who lives in a village that is doing just as good. Same as the person who lives in a city doing just as good. If you know that you're a village dweller, do your business in the village. If you're a city dweller, do your business. All those places, they have their challenges. They have their markets. You understand? It's not that, oh, you must leave uh, Gokutinja to come to, to Dwala to run a business to succeed. No. There's a person, they are, they are, they are, there's a population in Gokutinja. There is, they, have those, they have needs. And you can be the one to sell to them. And that's just what needs to happen. So people really need to understand that where your position is your place and where your place is the place where you're blessed. Do that and make the very best of it. I could have been in, in Ivory Coast doing business. I could have been in Equatorial Guinea. I could have been in Ghana, Nigeria. All these places we've done businesses there. But there's something about Cameroon that I feel that needs to be fulfilled. And that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. Uh, our profits may be shortcoming, but believe me, uh, they, they will last a lot longer because it's not just about making the money. There's a legacy that we're building to what we're doing. And that's what many people need to start looking at. What is the legacy that you're looking to build in the business sphere that you have? I mean, 10, 20, 30 years from now, they will remember Delhi because she did A, B, C, D. What would they remember of you? That's what many push ask themselves. That's what will make you position. How do you want to position yourself? Who are you? Where do you belong? How do you want to be known? Don't let society define you. You define yourself. Define your place. And make sure that where you are is where your bread and butter is. And make sure that you feed that place to its best ability and you make the gains of it. I, I mean, I remember I went to school in Boya. There was this guy in Boya that used to call Tigana. I'm sure people who... Who, who were there at the time. I'm talking about the late 90s and stuff. Tigana used to just sell granites. Uh, then the guy moved from granite. He had a, a shop, a clothing shop. Now this guy has a clothing line. I mean, this is a guy, this is 20 years in the making. You understand? But we have seen it. Today, if he says a story, people think that he's joking. But we can relate back to that. But I understand that there's something about being consistent. It takes consistency to make success happen. So a lot positioning of it. is about consistency. Yes, and that a, is what a, most a consistency are like is the key. I mean, I mean, you can you can sing that, you can shout, say that again, man. It, it is like most people don't know. It's it's a, lot, a whole lot of these things you're saying, and they have maybe ventured in it, but because they're not consistent, they don't understand why it's not yielding. 
you know, because they lacked that patience and all of that. Roland, I'm, I'm looking at the time and I know that there's always a lot you want to talk on. It's some questions coming from the comment section. Oben Ayong has really been active. Um, thank you so much, Oben Ayong. I'm not sure because that name, you guys have these um, um, unisex names, especially those of you from Bayanki. So I'm not sure if it's a lady or a man. But hey, I mean, we're enjoying the comments and I'm happy that you're very participative. And we have Odette Epole, he say this is so interesting. We have Mogop Helen, that's a good point. Build people and invest in them and together build systems. Um, Ate Floran Day saying that the issue is the world, but the world today is that people build systems before thinking about people. We need to think first. We need to think first about people before building systems. Solving problems should be a form of, of building a business. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Oben Ayong again on that one. Hoping to work with you in future. I have great ideas that will revolutionize Cameroon and Africa. Um, for now, I just want to get the skills and knowledge I need. Excellent. Um, yeah, it's 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 Betila saying I think the first thing to target is the market. If there is a market for your product, then you are good to go. Yeah. Um we have Hungwa Martin, my network, complaining about network and problem with all Cameroonians is that we do not work. We want to work together. We don't trust each other, so it's hard to grow. I mean, um, yeah, it's all of these comments and, yeah, tying with what Roland has said already, and I'm happy that we all can relate with these things, okay? Like I said again, I do apologize that I did not tell you prior to coming on here that we were going to have this live session because I wasn't too sure. I mean, it's a whole lot that has been going on, but, hey, um, we're here now, okay, and I hope that... Um, your concerns are being, I mean, cleared. Okay, so Roland, I want us to quickly dive onto this mentor mentee because that was the main thing for today. Okay, you've been touching on with the comments and all the other aspects, which of course are necessary. But I'd love for us to talk touch on mentor mentee relationship. That's the importance of it in um our in our businesses, you know the role the mentee plays, the role the mentor plays, how does it, first for starters, who is your mentor? Um, I know that there are different aspects in which you can have mentors in, but of course we're limiting it to business. Who is your mentor? The ones in Cameroon, out of Cameroon and, and yeah. Yeah, uh, Delia, it's, 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 a, it's a very good question. I think there are two things. There was something that we had to talk about the Greenhouse Academy. Uh, I, I don't want to to fail not talking on that. Uh, maybe maybe I just trash on that a little bit, then I get into the mentor mentorship uh, because it's also very important that we talk about that. And of course, all of that. I, is that okay? Certainly, perfect. Okay, okay. So yes, um, the idea of the Greenhouse Academy is, 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 is quite simple. Um, for those who are, uh, probably don't know much about what we do, we, we, my company, Greenhouse Ventures, is the only company in all of Africa that actually manufactures metallic greenhouses. Greenhouses are structures that we use to grow crops in them, and we can grow crops year round. Uh, we take pride more or less on vertical uh, production than horizontal. To make, it, to make you understand it pretty much is this. Uh, when you grow tomatoes outdoors, you grow a variety of tomatoes that can only grow to about one meter in height, and they can only produce about half a kilogram per plant. So even if you have 1,000 plants of tomatoes, you might only have as about 500 kilograms. But then there are also another variety of tomatoes that can grow up to six meters in height. So imagine a tomato that grows one meter and the one that grows six meters. The one that grows six meters, you can have as up to 15 kilograms per plant. So in that case now, you don't need up to 1,000 plants to get that amount. So that's what a greenhouse really does. It takes advantage of smaller spaces and more of the vertical space in the air to give you production. And with that, uh, since it's something that you can control the environment, you can grow almost anything. Uh, anything. Uh, today, we take pride in growing things that are normally been imported. And because of that, we have been able to shift 
the import export quota like uh before we started you know things like bell peppers used to be imported 100 percent. now only about 10 percent of that has been imported we supply mm -hmm. about 90 percent on the market every supermarket they get into in cameroon most homes you would find our bell peppers in there that you see the, look at a crop like bell peppers people don't know about it they don't even care about it everybody wants to do tomatoes goko yams plantains but these are bell peppers one kilogram sells for a lot so people need to understand how you start to do business in a very smart way. So that's one of the things that we do with the greenhouse. Um, but we got to a point where we realized we're getting a very high demand. Right now, we have a demand that it will take me about two, three years to fulfill that demand. And that demand keeps increasing. It's on the rise. It's like every three months, I get an increased demand for production. So mm -hmm. we are at the point where we can, we can only manufacture so many greenhouses. Uh, and then we can only engage so many of us to be involved in the, in the cultivation because we have ourselves that cultivate in our farms. And then we also have partners who own farms that we manage for them. So, for example, Delhi has land. Delhi is in the UK. Delhi has some money. Delhi comes to us and we, we, we build greenhouse on our farms. And then we train people who would manage a farm and we buy everything that Delhi produces. So Delhi just sits in the UK and all she gets is some money. So we realized that we needed many people to manage as many farms that we are having. And to do that, we cannot bank on the people that we have to keep recruiting from outside. So we mm. opened up an academy now. So the academy is a section that trains all our human resource agents. So we're training people who would end up working with us. Uh, so any person, once you come into our academy, the plan is that you work with us or you work for a greenhouse farm. It's that simple. You might end up working for a competition, work for whoever, that's fine. Our goal is that we want to make sure that the whole idea of greenhouse farming takes off and takes off very, very well. Uh, we have a market. And for any person, I have said it, anyone who is to greenhouse farm, anything you produce, as long as it's our recommendation, we would buy it. It's, we have said it and we have done it. It's, we have a demand. We have a market. So we realize that for us to be able to keep the trend of that, we need to train people. And that's why we came up with the idea of the Greenhouse Academy. Uh, we opened up, uh, it's been a month and a half ago, um, and it's gone very, very well. The demand for many people to be admitted is on the rise. Many people want to be a part of it. So what we're looking to do is also to see how we can now set up satellite centers in different parts of Cameroon. So we are looking at either in Limbe or in Boya. We're looking at uh, Yaoundé. We're looking at Bamenda. We're looking even at Kumba uh, to be able to get there. We're looking at even places like Betwa and Ebolowa. Because we have pockets of individuals in all these places who are passionate about stuff and who want to do stuff. More so, we have collaborators, partners who have land in many places. So, if I have a land, if I have a farm in Ebolowa, I don't, I will not be bringing produce into Douala. That would go to regional markets like Gabon. So, we want to be able to create markets in different parts of the country to feed the different markets that are nearby. For example, mm -hmm. we have farms in Limbe that we sell to Equatorial Guinea, sell to Nigeria. With the farms that are in Yaoundé, sell to Yaoundé, but they also go to Equatorial Guinea, uh, Kyosi. We have farms that are all the way in, this, in the southern region. So that's the goal. The goal is to be able to create a network of so many farms that can supply many different markets. But our end goal is actually to get into processing. You imagine that Cameroon is the second largest producer of tomatoes in sub-Saharan Africa, and we do not have a tomato processing factory. So, But to have a factory, you need to be able to have production. And which is where Dangote failed in 2015, where he opened up a big factory and he couldn't have he couldn't have production. So we want to be able to make sure that we can develop the technology, we can engage farms and farmers who can produce excess, and then we can transform or put to market. So that's the idea of the academy. Um, we are on Facebook, uh, Green Academy, on my page, Greenhouse Ventures. Any one of that, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to to, to reach out. Um, and for the sake of that, uh, Delhi, I'll just give you the number of the academy so that uh, you might just put it there and have people, if they have any questions, uh, they, let, can, let, they can let's actually have, reach out. Um, let, let me have the number, Roland. Yeah, it's 676. Six. Okay, so just a sec. Um, sorry, let me type it.
hope I spelled that right. So we have 676, you said? Yeah, 676, 5090. 5090. Yes. And the okay. other number is... Uh, I give it the other number? Um, just a sec, please. I need to put it right. Um, so that those who are in the comments could get it. So, yep. Yeah, the other number is uh, 681. I'm sorry. Six eight one. Eight eight. Yes, please. Five two. Five two. Six five. Six five. So the first we have six seven six seven. Yeah. Is that it? Nine five zero yeah, nine yeah, yeah. zero. Uh, let me how, read it again. Let me hear. Six seven six seven nine five zero nine zero. Oh, yes. And then six eight one eight eight five two six five. Yes. Cool. All right. And, then. and the, the the academy we are we are, we are meeting on rolling basis. Um, don't shy off. We have people who are on scholarships. We have people who, uh, you know, they, they, they come in and they would pay after they start to work. Um, all we need, we need a crowd of students um, who are ready for work. I'm not looking for people who want to come and study to go and write some concourse and stuff. Um, and we guarantee your employment as soon as you graduate. So it's not a problem. As, mean, as soon as you're even on internship. So you come in one month theory two months practical, and then you're already an internship and you begin to earn. Um, oh, wow. We have a lot of farms in many places from Guala, Yaoundé, Limbe, Boya. So you can be stationed in any place. So don't shy off. If you have a relative, somebody who is here and needs something, uh, we, we, we are open to, 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 to recruiting and training and engaging people on farms. So uh, don't, don't shy off on this, guys. If you can capture this, uh, be glad that Delhi, Delhi made this possible. Guys, pump, pump hearts for, for our boss, uh, Roland Foreman, and pump hearts. Um, you want to know more about what he is doing. His academy, which is very, I think that's his recent baby. He, he's, he, he has these children on a daily. <laughs> new ventures, new projects that he's doing. But you want to be part of the academy, okay? And that's the contact on the screen. Um, get to him. Is it true WhatsApp? Well, you can, you can call directly, Roland. Yeah, they can call directly, but we also have all, all the numbers have WhatsApp. They can go on WhatsApp, they can call directly. Uh, okay. That's fine. And so you well, get to speak well, with him and on all of that. Roland, do you take, um, do you, are you doing mentorship programs? Yeah, so let's, now let's go into the next part, which is mentorship. Okay, cool. Yes. So, yeah, so uh, I'll just talking... leave the contact on the screen, okay? Um, so you can always copy that, okay? And yeah, I'm trying to see where to comment in the comment sections. I'm using a different device now. I'm not. I can't see it, but it's okay. Yes, Roland, over to you again. Mentors, the importance of mentor mentee relationship in your business, okay? First of all, start yes. us start off by telling us who your mentors, your mentor is, or your mentors are. Yeah. Um, uh, you see, I would put a little story uh, to that. Um, my mentor is, is, is an icon. Uh, his name is Dr. William Tita. Mm. Um, he's, he's based in the U.S. Uh, Dr. William Tita is uh, one of the pioneers of computers in Cameroon. They're the people who introduced computers in the country way back in the days. and They've done quite, quite, quite some interesting things. Mm -hmm. uh, he's someone I met in my, in my undergraduate study in the U.S. And he was very instrumental in diverting my focus from pharmacy, which I was in, into business. Wow. I think, uh, yeah, and, 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 and that is what a mentor is. You know, people, 
people people have a very misconception about who a mentor should be. A mentor should be somebody you see yourself in them. A mentor should not just be somebody that you admire. People mistake that a lot. You know, someone will say, "Oh, I see a uh, uh, puff daddy, and I I want him to be my mentor. He's my <laughs> idol." <laughs> like it's worlds apart. Like you need to be able to tell yourself, "I can walk in this man's shoes. I can feel. I want. I want that." You know, it's it, it, so. There's a big disconnection about who people really want as mentors and who their mentors really are really is. Yeah, uh, and it's a big problem. And because of that disconnection, many people get caught up with the wrong mentors. You see, uh, when I saw my, when I met my mentor, he talked to me and I realized that, geez, I want to do things like this guy. I want to walk his shoes. I want to, and from the moment I met with him, believe me, I never left him. I asked him every question that I ever had from the day I was born. I don't even know. I, I bothered this man in every way possible oh but this I'm, is I'm happy to hear with what the, the passion yeah. with which you speak about him it's, it's yes. encouraging but this is it's the thing, beautiful Delhi. this man. is the thing Delhi, this is the thing i uh i i i i did a lot more to i worked for him you understand because that was the only way that i can get him to work with me and i worked for free like if you know the sacrifice I made, you know, he lived at the time, he lived about an hour away from me when the US, I would leave my house, go to his place, pick him up, and then we go to school together. But what was most important was that journey from his house to school because we spent about an hour driving to school. I would wake up every day at 4.30, get ready by 5, drive to his house, I get at, to his house at 6, wait for him to get ready from 6.30 to 7.30 we are driving, and that's my mentorship session he's someone who's very busy but i needed to find a time that i can connect with him and when he's done from school he was my lecturer i pick him up i drive him back to his house and that moment we spend time we talk we talk we talk that is how you have a win-win mentorship relationship you have people who come to you for mentorship and there's nothing for them to offer you understand i am a very busy guy for me to make my time to do anything with you it has to be worth it don't come to me because, oh, you believe that I, I can see the passion burning in you, but I cannot lie to myself. I will not lie to my, I will not tell you that I would have time to tell you this in every faithful way. No, I will not. Uh, and many a times we lose that. You know, someone comes with mentorship and then they want you to be telling them, oh, wake up today and do this. No, no, no. When you, when you want, when you see yourself in a mentor, make them understand that you value their time, you value their presence, you value their lessons. Many of us just go up to that point, oh, I want you to be a mentor. And then everybody wants everybody to be their mentor. You see, like, oh, you are there daily and you have about 100 people who want you to be their mentor. What is it they're doing for you? There's nothing. You ask them that, okay, why don't you come and even do, help me do my graphics? No, I'm busy. But you want me to be your mentor. Why don't you come and help me and even see you can create content for me? No, sir, I'm busy. But you want me to be your mentor. What is the benefit? You cannot pay me. You understand? So that is a big problem. You have, and we need mentorship because what? School doesn't give us mentors. School doesn't teach us what we need to learn in the outside world. Mm. You see, I, I, I never sat in any school of agriculture, but when I talk now amongst agriculturalists, I talk very loud because I, I have learned something and I have learned practical and it's very important. But I had to lace myself, even my employees, those who did agriculture, I learned a lot from them. I go to the farm and I work with them and I learn from them. You understand? That is also a way that you create a relationship. It has to be a win-win because in turn, they also learn it from me. How to run a business, how to even live in Cameroon with all people ask me in my test, how do you live in Cameroon after having lived in the US and it feels like you're more comfortable in Cameroon than anywhere? How did I do it? Ask those questions. Like a mentor likes to understand that you are passionate about what you want to do. I don't want to have to come to start working with you daily and then tomorrow you divert. I felt like I've wasted my time and I have very little time to put up. You understand? So the idea of mentor mentee is something that people really, really need to learn. What value are you sharing? What value are you offering? Have something to offer. You must have something to offer to your mentor. And it's something that makes that mentor feel valuable. It's the same way you have you are doing your PhD 
and you become a, a, a teaching assistant to your professor. That's the relationship. You understand? You help him do his research, you help him do that, and in turn, he shares his lessons with you. But you have to know that you and your mentor, you must have sessions that are not in, in an everyday setting. Mm -hmm. Like the, your, your mentor needs to feel comfortable talking to you in, in, a, in a different setting. Like my mentor and I, we would, we would sit in a bar, we would go to a restaurant, and he, this guy made me understand that he was also a student. Like we go to a restaurant, my mentor, he's, he's a wealthy guy. But there are times that he would say, Roland, you take care of the bills today. Even knowing that I don't have money. There are times that my mentor would tell me that Roland, borrow me 1,000 francs. Even when he has money. But he was, he's not because he needed my money. He just wants me to understand that even how big you can become, you are still, you know, you are still subject to being someone that you can be a servant and to be of service. So I learned a lot of these things in that whole process. For him to even open up his networks, connect me, you know, talk to people about me, to vouch for me, I mean, all those things. It, it, took, it took a while because mentors... Are you people, guys listening to this? I, I'm just, I'm blown apart, Roland, by, because it's, it's a beautiful session here. I, I, I hope, because I'm happy that I'm learning, you know, I hope they are learning as well. But a very few of them who are left, others have gone. But hey, I'm really learning. I hope that you understand that it is not just important to come, oh, mommy, daddy, be my mentor. I want to be my mentor. I slept the other day. I realized that that's why I get all the time on here. It's a lot of these young girls. They want me to be mentor, mentor, mentor. And I look at it sometimes. I'll be like, do you understand what it takes to be a mentee? You know, your own role as a mentee, because it doesn't just suffice for you to see somebody just like Roland is saying and, and, and admire all what they do. Do you see yourself in me? Do you admire? Do you want to be me? If it if it is all about becoming anti Delhi that you like, would you be OK? OK, if, if you have to, if your only growth would end at my level, would you be OK? Would you be fine? Would you would you like to, to be referred to as? As, as, as a product of me. So it's, it doesn't just suffice to like uh, what I'm doing, to like me, come on camera and talk to you, like the way I can. Do you want to see yourself with me? And how much of sacrifice are you willing to give to get what you want to get? It's, it's, it's very important that you said that, Roland. I mean, I think I, I know that, but I, I, I'm, it's good you reiterated on it. I'm, I'm happy that you, you sort of... Um, confirmed what was in my, my my spirit, you know. So I hope they are, they're listening and they're understanding what you're saying, just so that you understand. I mean, it's good that I did not say it, you said it. I mean, coming from somebody who is a success story, you want to take it from him. And like I always say, what Roland tells you about business and entrepreneurship, or even issues of life, you can live, you can take it to the bank. Okay, guys, sorry, Roland, that I kept you. I, I was just no. I was just carried, man. You're, you're, why no, you're, no, I mean, you're it, something you, else. You, 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 you and I, we, we speak the same language. I mean, you, 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 you know for how long we've, we've been at this and how we want to do things. You yeah. see, I, 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 I love, I, I love academia. I love teaching. I am a lecturer. I'm a professor. I'm a president of a university. I, I love sharing knowledge. Um, I, I teach what I do. And at one point, I realized that teaching in class wasn't what I needed to be doing. I need to go outside and teach it, you know. I'm not the guy who wants to just sit and tell people instructions, go and do A, B, C, D. No, I, I have liked it to be that you see what I'm doing and you follow what I do and how I do it. It's, it's more practical. And uh, I get a lot of people just like you do, Delhi, um, who want to be mentees. And I really want to do it. I really want to mentor so many people because I want to replicate myself. I, I want to be able to sit someday and have a thousand plus people who are doing better than I ever did. You understand? But it is so challenging because you have a system where, you know, people, that they don't understand. Yeah, I think uh, my friend Mungo Helen just wrote, it's a two-way traffic, you know. Um, you want to be a mentee or you want a mentor. What do you, what do you offer to that person? It's very important. Uh, what is it? And you have to find something in line of what this person is already doing. If you realize that, okay, Roland um, is into agriculture, why don't you come to me and say, hey, Roland, you know what? Uh, I can I can find ways to help to, I don't know, do anything that you think can add value to me. So we can have the time and then we can discuss. Because if you ever think that I would have time to say, okay, this is mentorship time, 
let's sit and talk. I will never have that. It, exactly. It, it doesn't happen. And when you tell it, them it like happen. that, they feel like no. you're, 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 you're snobbish, you're ignoring them, you're not taking them serious. They don't understand that it's a give and take thingy, man. It is. Yes. You see, it's you, you, you can never have that time. You, like Delhi would or not, you will not have a day where you say, you know what, uh, today, now, this hour is mentorship time. People, it becomes very unnatural. Yeah. You know, it, it, mentorship is something that happens naturally because it's a classroom away from a classroom. And it's very important that people begin to learn these things. You have to first understand who your mentor is, what is their scheduling, and how do you fit in their schedule. Like I said, I my mentor is somebody who is an early bird. But I realized that if I have to catch this guy, I have to wake up at 4.30. And for about three years, that was my schedule. I will pick him up. I will drop him off. If he has his meetings to go during the weekends, I will sacrifice. Like, I actually decided to be his driver because I believe I understood that that was the only time that I could have with him. You understand? And when he's in, in the car with me, he doesn't take his phone calls. I'm only asking questions. If there was a question that he never answered the previous day, I asked that question again, and we go again from there, and we continue to make it. And that is how, believe me, today, uh, there's so much that, and and uh, there is so much I learned, but this is how he taught me. He never gave me answers. He gave me ways to find answers. He taught me to be more intuitive. He made me to reason, like he would never give me an answer. I, I don't remember any time. I remember, time Roland, can I just answer. say something? <laughs> I still remember ahead. when I met my mentor. Um, I, at that time, I was really passionate about... Um, <laughs> let me just say something. Sorry I had to cut you. When you say that he never gives answers, he tells you... It's more like showing somebody how to fish, not giving them fish like that. So what he did was... So I, I, I was passionate about starting up a charity, uh, reaching out to underprivileged children and all of that. So I went to him and I told him he, he was he was... He was okay with it, but he started asking me questions. And he asked me if I can define my purpose properly. And I'm like, I gave him one session. So he said I should go home and do an assignment. I, I He gave me some. He just said, go and define it um, and bring it back to me. I didn't know how what purpose this, this, what purpose was all about. I did not even understand what he meant by go and define this purpose and bring. And then I got home and I wrote some long sermon explaining some long, when I just got to him, only the, the look on his face. <laughs> I could understand that and gone off topic, you know? So I was just trying to add to what you're saying. Like he would never, I, I don't remember when I tell him something and he, he categorically tells me that oh this except for very obvious ones but he he wants you to think out of the box he, he and even when he does it the rest of it is for you to go figure it out and I, and this is what a lot of us listening or you know uh, this our generation doesn't understand they want everything to be chewed and given to them so somebody is asking to be a, ment a mentee or for you to be their mentor just so that they will come and ask you questions for them to copy and paste, okay? Not that they want to really learn or oh, how you started. They don't understand, want to understand the process. They don't want to understand the journey. They just want that success story to be affiliated with their names like that. And when their mentees take them through the part which is need, I mean, the needful, they, they feel like, you know, you're just being hard you know, and all of that. And before long, the same person who was hailing you all over the place is, is nowhere to be found because, you know, they thought it was going to be given to them on a platter. I'm happy you're saying all of these things, um, um, Roland. Thank you so much. You might write on again. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you, Deli. I mean, I, you know, this, this topic came up the last time and it's something that is really burning in us because... Um, we, you know, we, I, I would say we, we've been blessed to be where we are, but I believe that we can be blessed further if we can bless other people. Mm. Uh, not as though that, not as though we have everything, but we, we, I'm, I'm okay. I, I wake up in the morning, I'm happy about my life. I go to bed, I am happy. Despite my challenges, I believe that it's, it's just part of what I have to do. Uh, many a times I wish that many Cameroonians or many of our brothers and sisters could see things through a similar lens like we do. Um, and understand life in the same similar ways that we do because nothing good is easy. Nothing is easy out there, but there is a formula to making things easy. There's a formula to getting things at ease, and it's it's no magic. 
many people have done it. Uh, we, we, we are not an exception. But it is very important. People need to know what, how things get to work. You see, like all the complaints that people would complain, business is not right. Isn't it? Go around this. People have succeeded in doing businesses. How come we, we, we? How, how come you would find the business seminars? How come you don't find those who have actually succeeded in doing business running these business seminars? You find just somebody who just knows how to talk, knows how to attract a crowd, run a business. But you have people still listening to them. You see, why can people not get to a point where they begin to question? But hey. You know, if I sit someday and have a hundred people say, hey, Roland, please organize a conference on this. I get that pressure. I would do it. You understand? I don't want to have to go and stand in the conference and I feel like I'm wasting my time because I want—I don't want to talk to people who just take notes and then tomorrow they're going back to the same thing that they're doing. I, I mean, there's so many platforms that need me to talk like yours, but there's a reason why I would walk and talk on your platform because there is some consistency. You've been on this for the last eight years, as I know it, and there is... There is, there is a meaning to that. Somebody who just starts a platform yesterday wants to come and take you to talk and then expects that you should do all of that. I mean, people should also respect people. Uh, that's one thing that I, I, I don't get. I don't, I, I don't take lightly, and I think that people are not paying attention to that. People need to respect people's success. Uh, many people work so hard through the night just to make sure that in the morning, I mean, if people get to know what you go through just to answer to everybody on your platform, still the same, still keep your sanity and do all the things and handle your own self. It's crazy. And people would, you would just expect people would just come and still feel very disrespectful about what you do. It, does, it doesn't work like that. You right. see, so this is why, you know, this whole idea of mentor mentorship is the key to people succeeding in business. I want to train people in business. I want to hold many people's hands and walk them through. You don't have to go to school to succeed in what I do. No, mm -hmm. there is so many ways that we can make it happen. There's so many people who are succeeding that never went to school. I mean, look at the top entrepreneurs in Cameroon. They are not the most educated. As a matter of fact, the richest people in the world are not the PhD holders. Right. And, and that's something that we need to understand that the, the, uh, the success of business is outdoors. The Bamlik people, they've understood, they understood it very, very well. Uh, the lot of, a lot of their studies is done outside of the classroom. They have a, a natural, a cultural mentorship way that it follows through. You're born today, you're assigned, this person becomes your big brother, you're given his name, and you're in charge of that person's success. It goes exactly. on like that. You know? And it does happen. You see it in the Igbo people, you see it in the Chinese, you see it in the Jewish. Why can we not do it? And we are here, somebody, you know, people, I mean, I am not someone who's new on the Cameroonian platform, but instead of you coming to Roland for Monday and say, Roland, you know, I like what you're doing. I really want to learn. I want to give this. I want to do this. No. You either want to come and see how you want to start fighting with Roland for Monday. You want to show how tough you can be. You want to do that. And it doesn't work. And, you know, you believe that, no, maybe dragging Roland for Monday in a will give them popularity. And you believe that's the way you want to do business. No. <laughs> and that's what many people are doing today. They believe that, no, when someone has built a platform, go drag them out and then gain some popularity. And then tomorrow you can start your own business. That is the wrong way of doing business. You never go anywhere with it. So you do, I, you think, never, I think, unfortunately, yes, yes. It's I think it's about time that people begin to understand that if we have to succeed, that's why I talked of we have to differentiate between the reality and the illusion. Right. We live a lot in an illusion bubble. A lot of us we live in the illusion bubble. No, it doesn't work like that. Things are so real. Karma is real. What you do to others, they will do it to you. If you do good, you get good. You do bad, you do bad. Don't think that you would come to them because, you know, you feel, no, no, it doesn't happen that way. So if we have to succeed in doing business, we have to create platforms for mentors and mentees. But those platforms have to be mutually beneficial. I like to know that I have, I mean, I can, I think, you know, I have a young guy, on Felix Fomengia. His story is very unique. He's online a lot. Um, he was one of the persons that we did a fund, a crowd fundraising for uh, when we organized the first uh, idea to ventures. That was from four or five years ago. And he had a very good business idea. And he stood out in the crowd. And there and there, I made a, a, an online crowdfunding. I think we had over, if I'm not mistaken, about 700,000 or 300,000. I'm trying to think how much was that, but between three to 700,000. And that is this money that he used today and built his platforms. And today he's almost everywhere now. Two, three days ago, he was top under 40, which I'm happy for that. Because through something that we did, he had a step into the industry. And mm -hmm. there are many people who can come up like that. But 
people are not serious, people are not consistent, people are not even true to themselves. People come to you to lie, thinking that you are just some new school guy who started today. Sometimes we don't have time to go back and forth to do many things, but we are not very stupid. I really want to engage many people in what we do. I, I want to find many ways. I mean, we have access to funding. We can engage many people. I don't even know what limitations. I mean, Delhi, you, you know it. But again, to find people that are rightful, the rightful minds, people that you know that they will do it and do it and do it even after tomorrow. It's important because I can get Delhi to invest in somebody today. But Delhi would want to know that this person is doing business for the next 5, 10, 20 years. And right. this person will do it to some other person. But you don't find people that are true enough to themselves to say, okay, you know what, I can vouch for this guy, even though I'm just knowing them today. So the whole idea of mentor mentorship is something that we need to really work on. I believe that is something that Cameroon businesses really do need to succeed in business because uh, we are doing these businesses today. If tomorrow we are not going to be around. Who will take over? It becomes an issue. You have somebody like you know the legend photo photo Victor who passed on and has all these you know families and now it's the whole chaos. Uh, but again, how do you create legacies that are long lasting? through mentorships mm -hmm. and we have to get to a point to understand that family is not only about blood it's people who share value you understand it's not that oh this person must come with have the same name or the same tribe speak the same language no 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 no. we're africans we are human beings we're cameroonians we are here we have similar struggles similar opportunities similar uh, similar goals how can we get together and do work for the common good of all of us that's right. what we need to be looking at that is very important for me and anyone who's come to me like that, believe me, they will tell you I have never, I have never held back my reservations to open up to anyone or to share ideas. I have, I have my, I have contacts that you know that very well. I, I would make calls that would open up gates for anybody, and I do that in a heartbeat, seamlessly. But again, people are not even so true to themselves that you don't know who to do that for and why not to do it for. But I believe right. that. We cannot, we, cannot, we cannot remain on that. We cannot remain on a negative mindset. We have to find a way to build up from that. And the only way is how do we create small groups of us who can continue to promote the goodness that each and every one of us is doing. And that's the way I think we can break that cycle of, of pessimism that really affects you know, that whole ecosystem of, of, of mentor and mentorship. But mm. I believe that is something that we really do need and something that we'll do and do very well. Bravo, 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 Roland. Come on, you know we've been speaking for two hours and plus. Really? Yes, can you imagine? It feels like we're just starting, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, guys, this is where we we we, we call it um, um, uh, a day, okay, on relationship and, I mean, business and entrepreneurship, excuse my French, <laughs> um, with Roland for Mundam. I mean, it's been an extraordinary beautiful session um as usual roland is always here wednesdays roland you want to give maybe a different schedule because people have been waiting for you of course they want to hear from the horse's mouth what's going on and when we should be expecting you <laughs> so that i can yes they can, they can always keep their data for you okay yeah let's 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 do let's do uh every other wednesday but also, uh, it's also important that before we have a session like this, let's have questions. I, I like to know that people are, are, are waiting to, 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 to hear from me. I like to know what people are looking forward to hear. I right. shouldn't be the one uh, suggesting topics for people. I want to know what you guys out there. Okay, I think, I think that's on business, me. That's really on me. Because if, if I don't okay. put it, they wouldn't be really know. So I would, from hands, um, latest Wednesday, I'm a Tuesday, Okay, I would have had a post on the platform just so that they can get their questions and I channel them to you. And when we come on here, we can then add to whatever um, has been sent to us. All right, guys. So one final right. word uh, for uh, them, uh, Roland, before yeah, you leave. Yeah, Delhi. And I think uh, what would also start doing, since we're doing a lot of business and, and entrepreneurship, uh, there are I, I see some people in the comments areas who are people that I know and doing some businesses. I would also want that from time to time we take time to promote some of their businesses, um, talk a little bit about what they're doing, um, so that others should understand that uh, uh, there are many people doing things out there, and and they can find ways to to share this share these ideas. Like I just have uh, 
my young man Hans Tani. Uh, Hans Tani is a very good, uh, very good designer. Um, he's done work for I don't even know what limits. For if all the posters you would have from eco banks to churches to I mean all these guys, um, he has done that. Uh, okay. So somebody very reliable, somebody who for all your graphic works. Um, I have him, and I also have uh, another guy, uh, Bogoli Knox, who is in Bamenda, uh, who's going to be moving to 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 Bonamusa de Duala very soon. So people yeah, that you can always rely on. I think Bogoli Knox used to be. I, I think I know that name. Used to be yeah, yeah. in GBS's Bamenda or something. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, Bogoli I Knox think I know that is, name is, really is, well. Is is, is 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 my childhood. We we go back in the nineties. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, this this uh, I, I like that when we have these sessions, we we take time. And if people have business, I know the girl uh, A Young. Uh, a Young also has some farm that she's doing. But we'll, we'll take time besides doing your promotions that you have. And if people have some businesses. We also talk about that, and then we talk about other things that we do, so that everyone is is in, into is into something, um, and and we make many things happen. Thank you, thank you, Delhi, for having me. Thank everyone for being on board. I, I like the questions. I like the comments. I like. I mean, we can talk for for days, but I know that we are all busy, so we would we would make many things happen with time as we go forward. Thank you guys again. Thank you so much, Roland. It's been an honor having you. I'm looking forward to having you again next week. Stay blessed and regards. Week, week, week after next. Week after next. Week after next. Week after next. Okay. Yes. Yes. Please. <laughs> thank you. All right. All right, Delhi. Thank you again, and thanks for everyone. Cheers. Have a blessed evening. Bye. You too. Okay, guys, thank you so much, okay? I mean, it was an awesome session, right? And I'm happy that you guys stayed tuned, okay? So it's 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 this session that we've had. We talked about mentorship, talked to, talked about op different opportunities, I in, in that, um, business opportunities in Cameroon and how to position ourselves to grab those opportunities. We talked about other things. We went in and out of your questions. I hopefully that he did a good job. I know he did a good job. And if you still have any doubts, and concerns of course i'm going to put up a post just so that you can put your questions and he can tackle them just the way you want them okay thank you guys so so much for the constant support like i said facebook has limited us but i know that we can do it okay it's limited us drastically but of course that now we're standing we're, we're getting there don't worry okay it's only for a moment and i'm sure they're eventually going to get tired and take off this band from us so the, 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 that's it for today and i hope that you had you enjoyed yourself i'll see you again see you on friday with relationship hot topics b emanuela will be here um denzel and bisong of course to 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 spice up your your friday evening okay and of course on sunday i have an very interesting topic um, to talk about um, on Hello Delhi, just so that you guys know. So keep your data ready. And I see you with a very insightful topic for us all to learn. Thank you guys so much. And I see you around. Bye bye. Blow me kisses now. Bye. Hello, my name is Madison Gafison. And I'm Florian Gafison. And we are the founders of Lead Missions International. We are so excited to announce to you our 2021 suite of conferences. We all know how the last 12 months have been, but we believe that this is the time to arise and take the lead in our lives, families, communities, and the nations. That is why we are inviting you to our Menly Conference holding July 21st and 22nd in Mission, Texas. And our Leading Lady Conference on July the 23rd and 24th in Mission, Texas. In our Men Lead Conference this year, we are exploring leadership above and beyond. And for our ladies, we'll be exploring the three Vs, vision, values, and voice. You know how the bar of leadership keeps dropping in our society today, but we believe that now is the time to arise and to go above and beyond and to set the stage for the right kind of leadership that we want 
in our families, in our communities, and in our nations. Ladies, we shall be uncovering how to add a voice to our vision and values as we live out our true calling as leaders in society. So why not join us July 21st through the 24th in Mission, Texas and in person or from the comfort of your home somewhere around the world. This year, we'll be coming to you from the Lead Missions headquarters in Mission, Texas, and we'll be broadcasting to the rest of the world. Please watch this. Hello. Hello and welcome to Watch Us Say Academy, an educational management firm. Watch Us Say Academy is the largest e-learning platform in Cameroon capable of simultaneously supporting 5 million students. Our primary objective is closing the gap between the demand and supply of educational services and the adaptation of technology to minimize educational loss. At Watch Us Say Academy, we have taken upon ourselves to 1. Create content for schools in Cameroon. 2. Convert them into ebooks that covers the syllabus of the academic year. 3. Provide video-based lessons, develop automated grading tools to enable students to carry out self-paced assessments and make the content available on our e-learning platform for as low as 1,000 francs CFA per subject. In order to visit our website, open a web browser and go to watchasayacademy.com. Hey, darling. Hello, honey. I brought you this. You got me a new blender. Oh yes, thanks to the more money I've been receiving through Moneyfix. How come? I receive more money through Moneyfix because they have the best exchange rates as compared to the last centers I was received. Meaning you've been saving more? Oh yes, use Moneyfix to receive more for less from abroad with their best exchange rates and save more. Always find the best rates to Cameroon with Moneyfix. Receive more money through Moneyfix today. Moneyfix, fast, easy and cheap money transfer service to Cameroon. Good news for Cameroonians living abroad and taking care of their loved ones back home. You can now purchase medications from the Your Farm app and have them pick them up from a local pharmacy. Here's how it works. Payer's journey. Number one, you search the medication by typing in the name. Number two, then you select a pharmacy in a city where your loved one lives. Number three, you make the purchase using PayPal or credit or debit card. Number four, you send the unique confirmation code to the recipient. Recipient's journey. Number one, the recipient presents a confirmation code at the pharmacy and collects the medication. Download your Farm app now.